Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back into the Dragon's Den. My name is Digital Dragon, aka Luke, and I welcome you guys in here. I am a 3D printing variety streamer here on Twitch. And some of you may ask, what does that mean? Well, it means that I not only assemble and evaluate 3D printers, um, I modify them, I build a lot of them from scratch, I take part in prototyping, such as the Zero G Mercury One here, which was a full frame build, uh, fully enclosed. Um, I've also done a trad rack uh, beta test, as well as beta tested the new uh, Fetus Next G Hot End. So that's kind of a little bit of what we do here. Um, we've got a couple of different projects going on in the channel right now. Uh, one of which we'll be getting into today, which is the black box tool changer. And good morning, Mr. Wizix. Um, the Shrimp Father 13. Good morning. Zombie, welcome in. Zombie, I don't know if you noticed or not. Uh, last Tuesday, I was actually wearing one of your Hedgehog Make shirts. It was a little bit hard to see because there was a different printer up here. Um, but uh, yeah. So welcome on in everybody. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we've been working on the black box tool changer build here on uh, Saturday mornings. And then during the week on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings, we've been building a Trident 350 kit from DFH, as well as a, it came with a six cart Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder version 1.1. And since they announced version two out, I did buy um, a upgrade kit to an eight cart V2 from both Triangle Labs and Sealy Labs. Um, we used the Triangle Labs kit to build our Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. And we're in the process of going through the calibration steps. Um, so if you were with us on Tuesday, you would have seen that things were going well. A little, I mean, calibrating an MMU of any type, right? Unless it's an AMS right out of the box, it's fiddly, right? And we were going through, we were working our way through it, and then the encoder stopped working for whatever reason. Um, and I did some research and found out that there was some issues with the Triangle Lab encoders. Um, and so I ordered four from PG, PJ3D and one from uh, Fabrico along with a couple of other things. The one from Fabrico comes in today. The other four should be here next week. So I'll have plenty of spares for the one on the Trident and the other one I'm going to build out of the C-Lead uh, lab kit. Um, lo and behold, yesterday afternoon, at some point, the, the light on the encoder came back on. So the encoder is working. I don't know if it just said, oh crap, I'm about to be replaced. Let me start working. Uh, but the encoder is working. So Tuesday, we'll get back into it. Um, I'm also a little suspect about the MG, MG90 servos on that and whether or not it's going to work well enough because the recommendation is the Savix servos. Well, I've I've got two of the Savix was it SH255 MGs um on hand now. So, we'll go with the 90 if we have issues or if I like the Savix better when I build the second unit, then we'll retrofit the one on the Trident 3. Okay. That's the update on that particular machine. Hey, Two Wolf Designs, welcome in, welcome in, and the morning hype, definitely. And for those of you that know, we drink coffee here on the stream, so we've got our Digital Dragon mug. We'd be drinking some coffee. Okay. Um, as far as Black Box goes, some of you may remember that um, we we made good progress on the last stream. We were just getting to belting, and that's where I was like, okay, we're stopping. I'm not going to get into belting tonight. 
Um, but we also had a little bit of, I'll say, drag on the y-axis, which is what you see me moving today. X-axis, no problem, moves, moves easy. Y-axis had a little bit of drag to it. So a couple of things. One, I noticed after I got the plate on and I was just checking things out after stream that the, and let me bring you guys in here so I'm seeing a little bit better. So I noticed that out of these three um, rods here that a steel ball will be sitting in, two of them were sticking proud. And I posted this on the Discord build channel for but two of these were sitting way proud. And I pinged um, KB3D Chris, and he said, yeah, that's not good. You're going to have to break those loose from the epoxy, scrape out the epoxy, and redo them. So I did that. And as you can see, it sits a lot better. Everything's sitting down nicely where it should on all five of these. So that problem resolved. It was just, you know, taking the four or the eight screws out so I can get the thing flat down and then using a small flathead screwdriver to scrape underneath, break the M3x8s off the epoxy, scrape out the rest of the epoxy, cleaning it up, and then being able to re-epoxy it in. So that that's better now. The other thing we had was the drag on the Y-axis. Well... That involved me taking this plate back off again, and this printer last night went downstairs, um, down to the kitchen counter, where I've got a big wide open space on the island side. It got flipped upside down, so it was resting on its top, and I had taken the four corner covers off so that I could get to the screws. And what I found was a couple of my 4040s had twisted, you know, in, in this longitudinal or, uh, direction. So basically, I, sitting on the top, I d undid all four corners, let it rest, loosened up the three gantry bolts on the carts and the M4s on the ends, moved it back and forth a bunch. It was moving a really, a lot better. And then I worked on this with one, two, three blocks to make sure that as I tighten them up, they didn't twist. Um, and lo and behold, everything's now nice and square, untwisted. Um, we tightened things back up and we got a lot better movement in the Y axis. Um, which means, long story short, we're ready for belting. Sometimes that's what it takes when you're doing these builds is just to stop, step away for a little bit, come back, reevaluate the problem, chat with some people. And that's what uh, Chris said. So we actually had a call last night and he's like, yeah, I was going to tell you, you probably had a twist in one of your 4040s. Um, probably most likely one of the Y axes that was causing a clearance issue on the side. Hey, Mr. Wizix. Yeah, clear mind. Sometimes you got to do that. And that's one of the things that we've, that I have definitely learned on this stream. Nothing good happens at 2 a.m. when you're wiring a printer. So go to sleep, back the next morning, review. And if you do finish wiring things late at night, don't turn it on. Go to bed, come back in the morning with a fresh head, good eyes, review all the wiring, then plug it in. Um, just, it works out so much better. L less chance of things going sparky spark. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, we've got our uh, frame built. We got our frame fully squared now, untwisted. We've got our bed platform in. We have mounted our bed. I've taken the bed off because it's like 
10 pounds extra that we don't need to be moving around. Um, and then uh, I did go this morning before stream and cut our belts to length. And with that, uh, let's switch the view here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, and people building the Giga Storm, um, I, I would not build that and then try and do a print in the same stream. I would, I would put it together, come back with a fresh head, and review it. Um, I saw Joel um, build his. and I, Well, I didn't watch it live, but I did go back and, and watch it after seeing some of the Twitter feeds and the gouge that it did in his bed and it toasted the bed and i believe the the nozzle because it, it ground a very deep groove in the bed um i don't know what the end issue was as to why that happened i i you know i know uncle jesse has one uh um hot makes has one um, Brian Vines has one. I would never have went and got one of those because it's just too big. I don't have I don't have a big studio space or anything like. That. As it is, this 350 is kind of big and. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We've got the wrong. There we go. That looks a lot better. Uh, we were we were on the uh, little portable camera that still sits over here. That was, um, but yeah, the, on a new printer like that, like I've taken a couple of my Voron because I built enough of them and I have started a print, let it go for a while and then gone to bed, right? But something like that, that's still unproven, that is a pre-production unit, um, yeah, no. Even the uh, uh, Pio Poly Magneto X, I wouldn't have started a printer, a print on that, and gone to bed. Just different technology. I, I don't want to. It's not new technology. That technology that they're using for those uh, for their linear motion has been used in a lot of heavy machinery for years, right? So that's not new technology, but it's a new implementation in 3D printing space. And sometimes we think everything translates well and it doesn't. So you know it's it's one of those things like um the uh what's the other one that's getting a lot of of renewed hype right now is the positron? The upside down one that's that's basically the size of a filament box where you pack it all down. Um, not the pause. Oh my god. What whatever. I, I think everybody knows the one I'm talking about. It's starting to get some renewed hype right now. LDO's got a kit that should be coming out real soon. But uh yeah. Anyhow. Back on to what we're working on today, which is black box. So black box, we left off with right where we're getting ready to start working on the belts. So what I did was I cut the belt to length. Um, and that belt length is called out for in our guide, which you guys switch to the right window for that. There we go. These belts need to be 894 teeth long or 1,788 millimeters because this is a 2 millimeter pitch PT2 belt. Um, so I went ahead and cut these this morning right before stream just to make sure that those were out of the way. And then let me go ahead and put the printer up here to get started with. Um, so that's where we're going to start. So we got our belt cut to length. And we're going to start on this front edge here, which is one of the reasons why I got the camera set up the way I do. Let me go ahead and move 
couple of things and I'll shoot the printer over. We can see a little bit more. And it shows we're going to start on one side. We're going to take one of our belts. We're going to come in from this side and through the slit in our um, front metal carriage here. Just like so. And I'm just going to pull them out through. Is we'll figure out and make sure you're putting it in the right way. So I just put this in the wrong way. So we want it so that when you're looking at the at the belt as it's going along the linear rail, you're looking at the smooth side of the belt. So when you put the belt in here, the teeth that come through the slot, when you fold it over, you're going to see the exposed teeth. Okay. That's what it shows here in our. Just pulling them out through, it doesn't really matter because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of our belt tensioning. Okay, this is just a weird little shaped thing, and it's got the belt slit into it with the tooth grooves on one side. What we're going to do is put the end of the belt in here. In. Take and line the end of the belt in there and push it in. Like so. And that's what we're going to use to set our belt distance. So we're going to do just like this. Okay. The way this is designed, it's going to be able to pull snug tight up against the side of the uh, either the metal part or the printed part when we do the back side. Okay. Get that in there. And we're going to need our CNC belt clip. So we're going to use CNC belt clips into the front here. And we'll use printed belt clips into the back into the printed part stuff. And we're going to use an M3 by 8 button head cap screw at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and find out what screw I need for the bottom, which M3 by 45 button head screw for the bottom. Let me go ahead and grab those, get those ready. M3 by 8 and an M3 by 45 button head. Have the right one. M three by eight and M three by forty five. Good morning, Pez Liz. How are you doing today? Hope you are doing well. And once again, we're going to be using our two metal belt clips here. So an M3 by 8 and an M3 by 45. Eight's going to go at the top. And there is a, whoops. So on your belt clip, it's not just a straight metal piece. There is a groove in it, and that groove is going to, of course, go over the belt. I'm just going to put my M3 by 8 in there and get that started in the hole. And we'll take our M3 by 45, and this is going to go all the way through the metal and of course go all the way in 
to the printed part. There we go. So we've got it like that. We're going to pull the belt tight with the printed part right up against the edge. Now the M3 by 45, this is the through hole. It goes all the way through to the back. And we're gonna have an M3 nylon nut that'll go on the back of that screw. So, grab ourselves one of those. Brush out of the shower, well, that's nice. Glad you're uh, fresh and clean and wide awake now. Hopefully you got some coffee as well. We're just gonna get this loosely done on by hand until it catches the plastic. Morning printed visions, welcome in. So we've got the M3 lock nut started back here. Pull the XY belt to bring the printed part snug. Keep the tension on the belt while checking the printed X bracket is aligned with the X plate. It is. And then fully tighten both of the button head screws. So in order to tighten this lower one, we're gonna need to clamp on to something on the back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my belt tight using my thumb just to push this in. Hold it all together there. We'll go ahead and tighten the top down. That's nice and tight. Now it's going to provide enough friction to hold it while we do the bottom one here. So I can let go of this. And we're going to need to use a pair of pliers to hold our M3 lock nut on the back and tighten this front or the uh, M3 by 45 button head. Now, once again, this M3 by 45 is going through the plate and through this black printed part. So we're, we're doing a compression on this black printed part to just make sure that you don't break your, your printed part, because then you'll have a, a bad time. You'll have to stop and reprint parts. Okay, so that's done. So, also we can now fully tighten the M3 by 35 socket head that we installed previously through this back um, side, holding this plastic part through the metal plate from behind. Um, let's move our gantry forward so we have the room and we'll just tighten this down. Remember this was put on just finger tight when we finished the last stream. And now we've got a good compression fit going between the printed part and this front part. So we'll remove the printed um, belt tightening tool. Slide it right off. There's our belt um, nicely clamped in there. Now we're going to locate the other belt segment and we're going to get it going through the back of the X plate as shown. So we're going to basically mount this one to the other side. So we're going to get both of our front belts mounted on the carriage. Good morning, Tactile. How are you doing today? Might be a little hard to do without being able to. Actually, it might be easier. God's honest truth. Oh, thanks for the lurk, zombie. You just come in through the front and just pull the bolt all the way through.
Let's do a roll tactile. All right, zombie, take care. Enjoy your travels. The print and visions, how are you doing today? Glad to see some some newer names in the stream. Pretty long belt. But like I said, just trying to get it around behind. It, it to me it's a little bit easier just to feed it in from the front. Like that. So we've got that belt going. Once again, the ribs of the belt or the teeth of the belt are facing forward off of the X plate here. We're going to use our same printed part, except this time we're putting it upside down. Same type of thing. We're going to line it up on the teeth and we'll pull that down. Same type of thing. We're going to use two M3 by eights though for this one. So we'll just grab two of our M3 by eights. And you'll notice that I'm not putting these in with any type of thread lock or anything. Uh, I don't think it's going to be needed for the belt, but. If I notice that one of these starts popping out, we will, of course, put in some thread locker. What I'm going to do is same type of thing. I'm going to pull this belt through using my printed part to kind of line things up there. And we'll get our belt tank or our belt clamp started. Top one in, let's line the bottom one up. That going in. Now once again, let's line our belt up. Pull it tight. And we'll tighten our belt clamp down fully. Just like that. Now we should be able to remove our printed part. Uh, pull the X belt, bring the printing tool snug, keep the tension on the belt, fully tighten both button head screws, remove the printed belt tightening tool. Take time to verify the X carriage for these slides. Yep. Any binding or rust spots felt during the movement from one end to the other could indicate a problem. You need to fix that before felting. Um, check the movement of the entire Y axis. We've been doing that. Good there. Y bracket assembly should guide along the linear rails freely. Return to the first XY, this side. Um, touch the rear side of the X plate. Route the loose end of the belt through the rear Y axis bracket assembly. Loose side should go around the smooth pole. And by the way, printed plastic part side is considered the front side. The metal piece is the back side. Our tool dock will be on this side. This is the part that's going to engage and pick. Okay. So we're going to take our belt. We're going to route it this way around that smooth pulley. Now, if you need to, what I normally do is just try and build a little bit of a curve in here. Pull it up on itself, get a little bit of a curve started. And then when you push that around the belt, it should be able to start making that turn around the pulley. 
Now we're just going to pull this tight. Or not tight, but pull the slack out of it. Like that. Hey, Timor, welcome on in. Now, of course, we're heading to the back corner here. And we're going to route the loose end of the belt through the XY motor assembly. And we're on the inside of this XY joint, which means we're going through the inside of our pulley and then coming around the, the outside of our tensioner. And I'll show you a little bit more about what that looks like. So we're on the inside edge, coming out sort of in the middle. It means when we come to the pulley, we're coming through this side first, and we're going to exit out around th this tensioning idler. And so it's going to come around, do kind of an angle, and we need to make sure that we come around here and not around the printed plastic. We do need to make sure that we get through this gap. Okay. It'll be easier just to show you that way than trying to constantly move and shift this printer around. So make sure that you don't have your belt twisted. And once again, roll the end over. Kind of give yourself a bit of a start of a curve so that when you route it behind that pulley, it has the ability to loop around. There should be some, some uh, printed material that will, or the, you know, there's a scoop in that print which should help. I'm going to just take a, you know, my, my uh, driver, come in from the side here and help guide that little stub, make sure it comes back out and around the tensioning pulley, not up against, or not on the inside of the tension. Going to basically guide it so that it comes in and around our tensioning. It is pretty much easier said than done. Getting it around the motor, but then I uh, hit the pulley and it tries to go inward versus outward. That's why you see me coming in from this side? Push belt in, try and get it to start going around the outside. Catching and driving. Progress. Can do it. Take your time. It's a little bit fiddly, but just take your time. You'll get it. So here's where see that we're coming in this way around the pulley, come out. We've got to pull it around the outside of this. That's our belt path. Whoops. Sorry. I know cameras right or camera angles right now is a little. Now, mind you, as I'm pulling this belt, I am rotating this motor, so you want to make sure. Once again, that you don't have your motors plugged in when you 
do any type of motion like that. Otherwise, you're going to back drive those motors and burn your drivers out. Next step, we pulled that all the way through, and here's the here's the picture that I was just trying to show you. It needs to go around that, and it should not rub on that printed piece. Hey, Timor, how's it going this morning? Then as we come down the back side, you'll see we go around this lower pulley and then in through the slot as it comes around. And once again, bring you guys down here for a little bit of a closer look. And what I'm going to do is you may see there's that gap right there. I'm going to take my belt, make sure it's not tangled. And I'm just going to try and shoot that gap right here, just like around the pulley, through the slot, and I can pull the belt through. Bring in this. Okay. So, and then when we go around to the other side, it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to go through the slack and around the lower pulley. Hopefully the a printed whoop in there help. Oh yes, thanks Pez Liz. You got coffee? I got coffee. So we're going to continue to route the loose XY belt through the front XY corner bracket. Once again, your your Pulley sides are considered the front idler side. So we're going to take this once again, belt facing you, the camera facing the printed side of the X-axis. We're going to push this in. We're in the lower slot. All goes well. We're going to catch printed swoop that's in the part there, and it's going to slide it around or direct it around that. Pull this through. And we're going to go through the other tooth pulley at the bottom of the other XY joint. So we're going to try and push that through as we're pulling this back out. Once again, it has a swoop that will help guide that belt around. I'm just pulling it to get the tension out. I don't want to pull it so that the X axis moves, right? So we've got our belt fully routed around the, the uh, belt path. And we're now up to the back side of the, uh, or the, I should say the front side of our X carriage, which is the printed part side. So we're going to take this and just, once again, put a little bit of a curl or a bend at it or on the end. So that we can bring it around and through the printed part. Show you where we're at now. So belt comes down, full length of the back, round the bottom of this pulley comes forward around this pulley. Once again, there's printed swoops in the back of this to help bring this around. And then we come through to the front side, get our belt through here. We'll have just a little bit of excess belt there. Okay. Now we're going to attach, once again, our belt tightening piece. We're just going to line the belt teeth up in our printed part. So this has to go upside down. Slide the belt fully in there. And then we're just going to rotate this around to the side of the printed part. 
We're going to need the printed belt clamp. And we're going to need an M3 by 10 socket head cap screw at the top. M3 by 40 socket head cap screw at the bottom. So an M3 by 10 socket head cap screw. That was an M3 by 40 socket head. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cap screws will use our 2.5 driver. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this belt tensioner in the back, and I'm just going to move the whole carriage forward to give me access for my driver back here. We're going to need our printed clamp part. So, break both of those out. And once again, the printed part is just like the metal part. It's got the little uh, indent in it, and that's the side that the belt goes, or the side that faces the belt. Once again, we're going to take our printed part, rotate it around to the side. Get our belt clamp started with the M3 by 10. Now there's not a lot of play here. So when it says leave it right up against the edge of the printed part, leave it up against the edge of the printed part. Got both screws lightly started. These are loosely now. Now it's going to tell us to remove the excess slack from the belt. Okay, so there's a little bit of play in the belt. And we're going to take this, that's why it's got this little tab on it. So you can hook it with your thumb and just use it to pull. And we want to remove the slack from the belt. I'm going to put my fingers up on the gantry so I can pull this without touching the tool head. Pull the printed belt, remove the slack from the belt. If the X gantry begins to move, the tension's too tight. Um, now it's going to start moving just because. So we'll, we'll give it a little bit there. And that, that's going to be good. Got a few extra teeth. Tighten these down. That. Then we'll remove our print part. And we're going to come over here. We're going to start on our other X. So I'm just going to push this back some to give us room to route. And we're going to basically go through and do the same thing, but in reverse. So smooth pulley here, which means we need to be coming from the back side. Make sure that you've got um, your belt with no twist in it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a pre curl on here just to help me out. Feed this around our um, smooth pulley. Pull it through. Now I'm going to come over here to the other side to make it easier to do the uh, front pulley or the rear pulley, okay, the motor side. And once again, we're going to come in from the inside around our pulley, and then it's going to swoop around and come to our tensioning.
tweezers. Starting to, we're going to need to use our tweezers to kind of pull and guide our, our belt in. Make sure that we're getting it around the pulley and not in front of the pulley. And kind of be a bit of a balancing. So far, this is the kind of fiddly part, trying to get the belts to bring on the front pole. Take your time and you'll be able to get through there, no problem. Once again, we're going to come to the back. And we're going to come from the side and try and push all the way through the slot. Pull that excess through. Same thing here, we're going at the upper reach. We're going to go around the slot. There should be a swoop into the print that will allow it to go around our tooth pulley up here a little bit easier. If not, try and pre bend your, you just roll up the end to try and get a little bit of a bend started in it. Help guide it around that pulley. As we're coming forward, we're going to bring around the, the last pulley on the XY joint. This is basically the same thing, just the opposite side. I'll show you once I get everything routed. Print in part like before. Belt end lined up. Again. Rotate around the back side of your part there. That will provide the initial belt tension. The Pushed around this and just walked our way through that part. Same thing, just different pulley. Last pulley, come into the back and ride it around. Put our printed tool on there. We're going to need M3 by 40. Whoops. M3 by 40 for the top, and it'll be an M3 
three by 10 at the bottom. These are socket head cap screws. So how's everybody doing this fine Saturday morning? What's your weather like? We had some rain roll through yesterday. Um, not much, very light rain. Um, and today it's going to be very nice. And I think like mid to upper 70s. So that's going to be nice. I'm going to get this ready to go on there. It's going to move my carriage forward to give me some clearance room. I'm just going to take this printed part and rotate it around the edge of this. Whatever reason that belt is out of the why other too tight. Did pull some of the tension out of the other. So I am going to loosen the other side and reduce some of that tension. Hopefully, give me a little bit of excess here that I can get this routed properly around. Print in part. Yeah, that's the problem. A little bit of excess so it's not sitting in the part. Nicely. There we go. Much better. Tens at the bottom, 40s at the top. We'll have to go look for that 10 here in a second. Where did that go? Hey, KB3D Chris, how's it going? Welcome in. Prefix Brit, or we should say nerd, shrimp father. Yeah, so pull you guys out. So, once again, we started off in the front with the metal clips, 
and we set our initial number of belt teeth based on our printed part. So this would just slip on over the belt and provides a good flat surface to get our initial length set in the front. We get it clamped up and then we remove. We did that to both sides of the belt. Then we routed that belt. Once again, we've got the flat side um, visible here. Goes around the smooth pulley to the middle of the part here coming out and making sure that we're going between this printed part and the pulley. Down around, around, around here, two side. And now we are, sorry about that. We've got equal tension for our belts, once again in the printed part, and just looped around and pulled tight. That's kind of where we're at. And thank you for starting a level one hype train. We're at 88% now. Um, let me see, let me get caught up here. We've got, uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. hype train just started. We've got Mr. Wizix subscribed for another month. Thank you there, Mr. Wizix. Um, we've got, Pez with 100 bits for the coffee fund, so thank you there. Um, once again, Chris, uh, KB3D Chris, um, gifting a sub to Createx Brit. Third. Um, what else do we have? Mr. Wizik, once again, resubscribed. For two months in a row, nice. We got a hype train started. Pezlas with 10 bits. Great takes Brit with 100 bitties. Thank you, Brit. Uh, Pez with another 10. Mr. Wizix with 100. Thank you, Brit with, or excuse me, Chris with 100 bits. That gets us all caught up. So thank you guys, everybody. It's great to start off a Saturday morning with a hype train. Yeah, no better way to have coffee, K2 Kevin. And in a Digital Dragon coffee mug while we got a hype train going. Thank you for the 100 bits. Kevin, welcome in. Another 101 from Pez Liz. We got a level one hype train completed and we're starting into level two. So I will tell you that the these nine millimeter belts route so much easier than the six millimeter. I think they're just a little bit thicker. I had the same, uh, other than the um, trying to get the belts into the printed parts on the K3, the actual routing of the belts around the printer is so much easier with these 9mm belts. Oh, and K, uh, Chris gifted a Tier 1 sub to K2 Tavin. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Switch back over here. Got a little bit while we're dealing with the hype train. So yeah, um, right now we've got the basis of our motion system in there. We have our belts installed. We'll be working on doing the tensioning for the belts here in a minute um, once the hype train's done. Actually, it looks like we've got a couple other things to install before we do the belt. And... What we got here? Chris just subscribed at tier three for six months in advance. Holy cow, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that gives you a 12 month total subscription. I appreciate that, Chris. Once again, I am sponsored by KB3D Chris. That's why I'm wearing his shirt while I'm doing this build here. It was time. Yep. 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 And it's the best orange. We need to get somebody. Like Polymaker or somebody needs to make this this orange. And I know you guys were talking about that some last night about whether you could get it in an embrosure. That would be really good. Uh, hello, Eric. I'm not going to butcher your the rest of it, but welcome on in from the Netherlands. Hello. Thank you for being here. Yes, coffee and hype, coffee and hype. Let's hype it up some. We got a hype train going, level three, 58% done. 
Let's throw some emotes out there. Nice, you got some ambrosia samples in. Cool. Well, if you get a whole bunch of them and you need somebody else to help test it, you know, you throw a roll towards me. I've got a box that should be coming soon. Hopefully I get my KB3D mug before uh, Rocky Mountain. Which, by the way, Chris, um, would you be able to bring another black shirt for me at Rocky Mountain and XL? This one I've washed a few times. It's starting to, starting to fade out a little bit. Use a, another black one. And I'll just pay for it at the show. Tees and hoodies. There we go. There we go. Tees and hoodies. Nice. These are so nice. Awesome. 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 K2 Kevin with a 16 bits. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next door neighbors keep having their uh, car alarm go off. It's driving me nuts. Has Liz with 17 bits. I see. Just one up in K2. See how it is. Urkfa in a way, yes. So Timor, the Urkfa um, on the uh, Trident, we were working on that. We had an issue where the encoder just flat out stopped being recognized on Tuesday. Uh, you're competing to be the top bit gifter and then K2 Kevin comes in with a thousand middies. There you go, K2. That'll show her one up. Here's your one up. Exactly. Let's go. Steve. Yep. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, I jumped on a call with uh, Chris last night. on the discord and we were chatting a little bit because um, we were having some, I'll say tension. I don't want to call it binding, but there was a definite difference in the Y linear axis than the X. Um, and he had suggested that quite possibly one of my upper frames had twisted. And sure enough, I wound up taking the X plate off taking the printer downstairs onto the kitchen counter where I've got a big wide uh, part island on the kitchen counter, uh, which has a granite or marble countertop, and set this upside down on the counter. I removed the four corner pieces, took it downstairs, sat on the counter, and un you know just barely loosened up the corner screws and let everything settle. And as I started to put it together, I was not only checking the square on the inside, but using the one, two, three blocks on the outside, clamping it to make sure that it didn't rotate anymore on because the Y axes had rotated a bit. So we got that all squared away and the Y axis is moving a lot better now. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, I, I was chatting with uh, Chris about this to make sure that we had everything good to go for the stream today. And then also got a chance to talk with Poity and Turtle Crawler, who I haven't talked to in a little bit since I was doing work on the Zero G. And Steve Bilge jumped on there a little bit too. It looks like Steve's going to have his black box soon. So, Pez Liz with another 10 bits. Thank you. Thank you for keeping things going. But yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to Rocky Mountain and seeing everybody out there. Um, Mrs. Dragon's going to be out there as well as some of her family. So they're going to be sporting um, uh, digital dragon shirts. And uh, Mrs. Dragon has created a shirt for herself because that way she could be... Uh, yeah, people can find Mrs. Dragon then, basically. 
Uh, but we'll have we'll have shirts out there for her. Um, but yeah, she's gonna run. We're, we still need to get off our our butts and build the battle bot for her, so that she can take it out there and potentially run the battle bot if they got the battle bots out there. And we're probably gonna have a death racer out there or both death racers. I'm not gonna bring the uh, drag racer this year just because of trying to get it out there without it getting busted up. Um, but, but it will be out there at Murph again. And Black Box will be going to Murph. Um, if, once again, uh, I don't think I'll have it done in time for uh, Rocky Mountain. And I don't want to try and, and transport it out to Rocky Mountain either. Um, because if it goes out to Rocky Mountain, it will just finally be assembled, basically. So it's not going to make it to Rocky Mountain this year. But it will make it out to Murph and 3D Printopia. Awesome. So we're winding down on what is going to be a, a around 30% on a level 3 hype train, I believe, is where we're at. Um, a few seconds left there. So thank you, everybody, for the resubscribes and the gifted subs and all the biddies. It really helps me um, in bringing things into the channel that everybody wants to see um, and helps just offset the cost. Um, most of these builds that you see behind me have been self-sourced and self-paid for builds. So it really does help uh, to keep things going on the channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love your, your Nano Leaf light up. I know they're not nano lease, but your light up hearts, Teslas, those look really cool. I love those. So awesome. We're gonna get some more lights going, and then I'll work with KB3D to let you guys uh figure out how to get Lumia Stream going and so you guys can change the, the lights on. So pretty cool. Awesome. So let's jump back over here to the browser window. Uh we do have some new uh Pipe train emotes that everybody just got. So awesome. Thank you for the follow, uh, Falzen. Falzen. Uh, thank you, thank you. Karen made those emotes. Very nice, very nice. Hats off to Karen Chow. Hats off to Karen Chow. All right, so now uh, we'll now remove the excess slack in the install belt. It's not to achieve the final belt tension. And that's what we've done is we've just taken up the excess slack. So when we move it around, we're not seeing a lot of bow in the belt, right? So that's all we wanted to do is just have them gently uh, brought in like that. So we'll go ahead and remove our printed belt clamps. Tensioner parts. We can set those aside. I don't think we use those in the actual belt tensioning process. We're going to add on a couple of other parts now. So, hold extension, fully tighten the M3 screws. Yep, yep. We're going to locate the SLS extruder drive gear. Now, this is provided in the kit. Okay, and you can 3D print this one yourself, but they suggest if you do that you print it out in a self lubricating style material, which by the way is pretty expensive. I would suggest not printing it out and using one in, in a polycarbonate carbon fiber, um, just because. So So what I'm going to do is make sure that the flat of my shaft is facing up just because it's going to make life easier. You're going to take your SLS printed part, slide it on there, and we're going to need to use a set screw to hold this in place. Now what I just did was I pushed this all the way back against the end, and then I'm going to pull it forward ever so slightly. You want it all, as far back as possible, but not 
touching the back plate because otherwise as it's moving around, it's rubbing against the back plate, which will provide some drag. Um, not necessarily uh, a boron only channel. I've built borons, yes. I have a, quite a few borons behind me here, as you can tell. Um, but we started off with Bay Dragon because I won the printed parts um, from the boron team at Rocky Mountain last year. So we printed this one, self-sourcing the remainder of the parts from Tensor 3D and KB 3D, and we got some LDO stuff as well. Then we built the Trident in the corner here, and this Trident is sporting my logo on both sides, thanks to KB 3D Chris. He cut the vinyl for those and installed it for me before he shipped them. Then we built an LDO Boron 2.4. We built another 2.4, but that was a, I'll say for a community member, that was Chewy's build. He gave me all the parts at Earth last year, and we built that on stream for him. And then I did a 350 Trident build because I wanted one that was a little bit bigger. But you'll also see we have a 0G. We've got an Annex Engineering K3 here as well. We've done a Flying Bear Reborn 2. Um, we did an Ender Belt, an Ender XY uh, conversion. So we do quite a few things. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, uh, do I need to tap the hole on here? Yes, I do. I need. We need to tap this hole for the M3 set screw. It's going to be used. So thank you for calling that out. Yeah, we have fun here. We learn. We break things. We fix things. So a uh, thousand. When I did mine, and it's down here in the corner. It is the. Additiva 3D uh, Core XY kit. So it's 3dbeltprinters.com is the site. And I will tell you that this kit does have some issues um, in the fact that it uses two lead screws and two linear rails on either side, but it's forward of the center of gravity. So the bed does tilt up and down because of the backlash. Uh, when it's moving up and down. So you have some, some bed leveling issues. I did print out all the parts and we will be converting it to a triple lead screw based on the printed parts that one of the community members made. There is a kit and I'm not sure if the base kit has been fixed or if it's just an add-on for a triple lead screw. Um, Yeah, um, but that the standalone upgrade to a triple lead screw is, I think, $120 for the kit from 3D Belt Printers, 3D Belt Printers .com, uh, which is the Additiva 3D website. Um, but I had the rest of the parts and I wasn't going to throw another $120 at it, so I just printed the parts to do the triple lead screw from one of the community designs. So we need to tap this for the M3 threads. Okay, so let's go back to this view. And we'll have to grab our tap set. And this is a Inexpensive tap and die set from Harbor Freight, nothing big. Um, I do have some 
uh, taps, actual tapping pieces on the way from KB3D. So, um, webs and flows. So I'm not going to use the Additiva 3D triple lead screw kit. I'm, uh, if you go out to printables, there is a community mod. And I cannot remember the guy's name. Give me one second. Um, bear with me one second. I just need to pull up the PDF so I can. Um, it's Supa Vitax, S U P A V I T A X on printables. He's got a triple Z mod for the Ender XY. Uh, once again, normally when you tap screws in metal, you're going to use some type of thread cutting. Um, uh, solution to um, reduce some of the friction. Do not want to use that on printed parts, so we're just going to tap this dry. Once again, this is our M3 by 0 0.5 thread pitch tap. And we're going to, you're going to look through the end and make sure that you run the tap fully all the way through right before you hit the other end of the hole there. So, for like that, because the tip of your tap is tapered, so the first, I'll say, one and a half, two millimeters of your tap is not cutting threads, it's more of centering the tap in the hole. So, And there will be a couple of other places where we'll have to tap the more M3s. And there's a spot where we'll do M5s. But once again, it'll be real hard to show, but normal. So M3 is this size. This one's the M5. You can hopefully see the difference in the thread pitch, the M5 is a lot coarser. The M5 threads that we have to do though are similar to these. It's a 0 0.5 thread pitch. And so I'm waiting on a fine reamer from KB3D to come in so that we can go through and do all of those M5 threads because there's a couple that we've already passed that'll be used to hold in a threaded magnetic um, set screw. So we'll have to come back to those and add those in down the road. So we've got our, once again, our printed part. We just tap threads in there. We're going to slide this on, push it all the way back up against the face of the motor, and then pull it forward ever so slightly so it can rotate around and not drag on the face of the motor. RH3D is the Ender 3 NG that's on our build list. Okay. Cool. Oh, my 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 bad. I, I get that wrong all the time. So it's belt 3D printer. Yeah, there you go. I, I get that website wrong all the time. Um it's it's a long name. Why it's not just Additiva 3D, I don't know. Um, especially since they branched out from from just being belt printer to Core XY as well. Um, we need a M3 by four set screw now.
And once again, normally set screws, you would want to use some Loctite on. We are not going to use Loctite because I cannot guarantee that Loctite will not damage this printed part over time. And we really do not want the gear for our locking mechanism to fail because that would mean tool changes stop working. And get this set screw lined up, started. Then we're going through threads that we cut onto a printed part, so go slow. And you're seeing me wiggle it just a little bit. That's making sure that it sets fully against the flat as I tighten this set screw in. Guarantees that we make the. And once again, you want a little bit of tension, but you don't want to ugga dug it and strip out the printed part because you are going through print. And we do have an ad that just started. Yeah, it's definitely too long and confusing of it. We're going to need to locate our bearings, and these are in our motion, our uh, motion black box CE kit. Or at least that's where I've thrown them after working through things. And we need the M5 by 10 by 4. Those are in our test tube here. So 5, 10, 4 bearings. And we're going to press this in to the metal plate underneath. Our, uh, that gear that we just put in place. And this should be a nice tight press fit. No problems there, it went right in. Now on the back side, there's a bearing flange pocket on the back side of our, of our carriage here in the printed part. Let me see about pulling this around so that we can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we have this big recessed area here. And There is a printed flange pocket. So we need to install that and snap that into the back as shown. So we've got these two pieces here. Both of them have stepped faces. This is the larger one. This is the one that's going to fit in there. So this pops right in there like that. Okay, probably not going to stay in place, but it'll pop in there like that. Fall out. Awesome. But we're going to pop this in there. Then we're going to locate another bearing and press into the face of that part. So we'll grab another one of our flange bearings here. We're gonna do this off the printer. So this will pop into that printed part. Then line up and press fit in. You need to use your Nipix. Make sure you don't have any burrs or anything. 
that would impact the installation. I think I've got a Z seam there. If you do any filing, be very, very careful and go very, very slow. You don't want to oversize it. Our bearing is now press fit in. Nice and flush because I pushed it in there from the table. And once again, this is going to sit in there. It's just, it's a conical shape. There's no like key slot or anything in there. So it's going to keep falling out for now. You'll see what's going to happen here next. We're going to locate the CNC tool changing pin. That's going to be in one of the tubes. Be careful opening this because there's not only just the T, um, the T piece in here. But there are two little lock rings in there. Do not want to lose these because we do need these. We are going to use these. So put those down there on the side. And we're going to slide this in from the metal side through the flange or the uh, flange bearing on the front and then through this flange bearing at the back. Hold that in place. Slide this T slot from the front through the bearing and through this bearing at the back. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to locate the T lock stem. These parts are extremely small. Be very careful not to lose them during installation. So I have a question for you because there wasn't a printed part, Chris. So I hope you're still here. But would that be the 5 by 6 by 0.4 gems here? Because these are really tiny. And really small shims. And I'm assuming these are what we're talking about. Do I have an affiliate link for KB3D? Yes, I do. Just bang KB3D and that will provide you an affiliate link. Okay, so we're going to pull these out, and you got to be very, very careful. I cannot explain to you how utterly tiny these are. So you got to be very careful with these that you don't lose them and send them running everywhere. Normally, I would have a paper towel sitting on my desk that I can put small fiddly things like that on so they don't go running out on me and don't go rolling off way. We're going to take one of these shims and it's going to fit over this shaft. Very tiny, very, very fiddly. And there's a groove in this shaft that this needs to go past. Make sure you get it past the groove in the shaft and I'll bring you over here and show you what I'm talking about. There's a groove in this shaft. You need to get that little bearing just past that groove because that groove, 
fill up too well. To, there we go. See the groove there now? So we get that, that stem just past that groove, and we're going to put a locking clamp on that groove. Okay, and yes, I do have an affiliate link to KB3D and I have an affiliate link to um, uh, Polymaker as well. And I believe it's Bang Polymaker. Polymaker. Do a Bang Polymaker. Yep, there's the affiliate link for Polymaker. So we love Polymaker here. I use a ton of it. I also use atomic filament, fusion filaments, um, Xyltec. I've used KV, KVP in the past, but I understand that they're having some. Uh, how do we put this? Quality and consistency issues, both in product and customer support. So uh, we're probably not going to be doing too much KVP in the future. And I am. Uh, expecting some 3DO filament today. I believe it was, uh, what was it? This Blue ASA, I think. Yeah, Blue ASA CF. Memory serves me right. Yeah, Blue ASA CF. Got a couple of rolls of that coming today. Because uh, I, I am on pre-order through KB3D for a Milo. So if you want to get a Milo, by all means, please use the affiliate link. Once again, uh, it doesn't cost you anything more. It doesn't change the price to you at all, but it does provide some support um, to the channel. So I appreciate that. So now we're going to use the four millimeter E clamp or E clip. Now there's two of these little clips. And based on the look, let me see if I can get this up here. Be joined. There is a little black one in the bronze looking one. Whoops, come on now. There we go. A little black one and a little bronze looking one. We're using the bronze looking one on the right hand side. What we're going to use on this flip. This is going to clip into that groove, so this is where things may get a little fiddly because you're not going to be able to just slide it on from the end. You've got to line it up on that groove, push it over the... Yeah. Make sure that that stem is between this groove and your printed part before you put this on. There we go. So that's now on. And what I'll do is I'll push this uh, T slot forward. So we've now got it tightened up against the bearing. So we'll have the bearing, the shim, and then this clip piece. Okay. And now we're going to add. Three more of the T lock shims to the end of the T lock. So we're going to grab three more of these little tiny shims and carefully put them on our shaft. You don't want to drop these because if you drop these, it's, you're probably not going to find them again. Once again, I'm hoping that KB3D is here around that can make sure and tell me whether these are the correct shims because there was no printed shims. So we got a shim, a locking ring, and three more shims. They're slid all the way up against the E clip. These are correct. Good. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. 
And now we're going to take the other printed um, cover, and this has the other inter inner step to it. And this is just going to cover all of these shims and bearings. This is going to press fit on the shaft and just push all the way against the bearing. You want to make sure that it's fully seated and covers everything up. So once again, I'll, I'll ask this question, Chris, then this other clip that came with the T-bar, is it not used at all? Because I don't see this one called out anywhere. You know there's a groove on the front edge, but it shows up, it doesn't stick proud of the bearing on the front face, so. Okay, that's not that's not used anymore. Good. So that's it's good to know whether those things are used or not. Um, and we've got two extra shims. I don't know if we use these later or if these are truly extra, but make sure that those make it back into the test tube, and the cover goes on. Because once again, you lose those shims, and you're not you're probably not going to find them again. Now we're going to locate another um, black stop. And we've got two more of those left. So we'll grab another one of these. Yeah, they're spares because they're so easy to lose. Yes. Yes, they are. So we'll take another one of our black stops. And this is going to go on this side here. Um, I'll detach and bring you guys over here rather than trying to move the printer. So there's this like cutout area, this this indented area, and we're going to mount the black stop right here using a couple of M3 by 8, I believe, 3 by 8 or M3 by. Going to be socket head screws. Three by six socket heads, okay, even smaller. Grab a couple of those and pay attention to the orientation. Your um, your JST connector is towards the top. So we'll just get this put in place, lined up, and screw this in. Yeah, and I I wouldn't expect that the point uh, four shims would be, you know. Not easy to lose. Those things are so tiny. Just going to tighten this down. Now, once again, you're tightening against the circuit board, so don't like crank for all your work. Just get them snug down. Now we're going to move on to the XY belt tensioning. So, rid of these pieces, throw that in the box. I'm not going to use those anymore. We'll put these back in the box. I'm trying to stay somewhat clean. So, stepper motors will produce electrical current. So, if you're trying to retension the belts and you already have everything um, plugged in, just unplug your motors. Uh, they've got connections right at the motors. Just unplug the wires. And that way you don't get any back feed into your controller board. You do not want to burn your steppers out because on a duet board, the stepper drivers are direct connected to the board. They're not like a step stick that you can remove. Okay, so be, be cognizant of that. Um, Faster the motor turns, the more electricity will be generated and could possibly even damage your controller component. 
move the X carriage slowly toward the left end of the machine until the Y axis brackets are resting against the X Y belt tensioner. So I'm just going to center my um, carriage and it says move it towards the left. That's because I'm now facing the back. So let me turn this around. So I am now facing the front edge of the printer. The left side of the printer will be where your, your idler pulleys are at and your belt tensioner. Whoops, sorry, belt tensioners are here. Did I just do that wrong? I did that. I, I had it direct. I'm now on the back. Darn it. Okay. Let me turn this back around. There we go. So we want to move it to the left, all the way up against the belt tensioners. And we'll just get that lined up there. We're going to need our two printed belt tensioning. Okay. They are not symmetrical. They are different. Right? And this piece is the one that's going to go on the side with the, with the black stop. Right, so this front corner here, we have a black stop there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this with this cutout edge facing towards me because that's what's going to allow us to go over the black stop. We're going to put this in from underneath and we're going to set it on the linear rail and move it all the way forward. We're going to do the same thing with the other one making sure that we line it up in the same orientation. So the, um, say which, do to do. Yeah, so it goes in this way. So the big hole here that you see goes around the M4, the head of the M4 that's, that's holding the belt pulley in place. And the smaller one will go over the belt tensioner um, length. So we'll have to set this in place over the linear rail and slide it all the way forward as well. Now I notice when I do that, Chris, that it it actually hits the belt on right. Let's go the other way. I'm confused. Because this one's got the cutout for black stop, or is it the opposite way? It's got to be the opposite way. This isn't the cutout for the black stop. This is the cutout for um, the pulley. There we go. That makes sense. That makes better sense. Okay. I kept thinking that this was for the uh, BT right bottom. Okay. So once again, the big hole is going to line up on the um, mounting. So it'll go over the mount, the M4 mounting hole. And this is now cut out to allow it to go around the belt so it doesn't impede the belt and the pulley. Let me set this up here. Put it down. I'll show you what I mean. So, got it sitting up here. Belts can give so we can get it in here. We line it up on the linear rail, right? And we're going to push it forward. And the hole is going to go over that M4 nut. This cutout then. Leaves us access around the belt. Okay. And now what we're going to do is 
is we get both of these put in. So there's there's the image. Yep, going up and over. Slowly move this X gantry all the way back until it's up against these printed parts. Once again, slowly move it back. I'll go a little bit faster because I uh, I don't have my um, what you call my mutters plugged in. So it's all the way back. I've got a gap on this side and it's flush on this side. That's okay because that just means our belts aren't tensioned the same. That's what we're here to solve. So I can solve that partly by reducing the stress here, which will let this come back in, or I can tighten this side and it will. Um, it'll pull this side out. So the goal is to tighten the tension of each of the belts to prevent skip steps during operation. Contrary to popular belief, excessively tight belts are not better. Thus, the belt tension adds to vibration in the gantry that leads to surface defects in the print. Tuning guide input shape and calibration will reveal if the belts are tight. Again, by equally tightening the screws, one of the XY belt tension. Important to turn each screw in the tensioner block equal amounts to keep the tensioner um, and pulley parallel to each other. When the desired tension, when the desired tension, the belt is achieved. You will notice that one of the XY brackets will have moved away from the tensioning tool. Move the XY belt tensioner on the other side of the machine. Begin to turn the screws on that tensioning block in each. And until you bring it together. So basically, right now we're not together. This one is off of this block here. I'm going to start on this side and we're going to start just tightening this belt down on this side. Those are button heads, so you'll need a number or a two millimeter wrench driver. Hey, Maker Mind Nexus, how's it going? So. Did a uh, little enough, so we'll do another three. Doing both sides, so I'll do one, uh, you know, the top, then come back and do the bottom. This way I'm keeping them equally tensioned between the top and the bottom. And then every once in a while, just move it up and down. This will help to reseat things. So once again, we're getting closer, but we still have a gap over here. So you know, belt tensions definitely looking a lot different. So we'll keep going on this side. And really, see, it looks like there's more teeth showing on front edge. Everything else. Wonder if this was.
I'm going to actually loosen this and let one tooth go on this. And see if we can't get it square to start with. Because once again, I don't want to make them tighter than they need to be. Okay. Definitely loose and floppy now. So we'll continue on our tightening behavior. these things around a bit just to make sure and get that slack positioned all the way around the belts. We're not pulling away yet. Maybe slight gap right over here. Now we'll start over on this side. Once again, I'm just trying to go and make sure that these stay nice and even as far as the tension. I'm off ever so slightly gapped on this side. So I'll tighten this side down a little bit more.
Okay, so we're nice and even still. These belts are really, really floppy. So we'll just keep tensioning it up. If we get these all the way in and we still don't like the tension, then we can pull one or two teeth through and start over again. Oh, hey, Namir. Welcome in. Um, we're pulled away. We got a little tiny gap on my side again. Which means we need to go about another turn or so over here. And yes, this uh, this printer, the gantry is moving very, very nicely. I realize that this is not seated all the way. That side, actually. These belts are still pretty floppy, Chris, so I think we're going to pull all this out and we're going to restart by trying to tension our belts a little bit better. And when you do this, you're going to back your belts off. We're going to go back to our printed parts that we used to set the gap to start with. On these. Heaven forbid if I should have those like readily available right at the top of the bag. Here's one. There's the other. Remember our printed jigs here. This sets the gap that we need between the printed parts. And let me grab. I'll head screwdriver because this will be easier. Uh, 
how are we doing today, Dan? All right, so I'm going to loosen these up and put the printed parts in here. Tighten them back down on the printed parts, and that will give us a starting point to tension our belt. That's there. Now what we're going to do is use our belt tensioner. Um, so I want to try and leave it up against the blocks here so that I can, when I tighten it, I'm, I'm pulling these belts tight with the um, blocks back here to get started so we shouldn't have that much loose um loose belt to try and work out once again grab it on both sides give it a gentle tug give it a gentle tug and pull it right off the belt Darn it. Apparently, I don't have a good uh, print tolerance on this one. I should have done it with uh, We'll try and I think we pulled it one or two teeth more. We'll try and match up teeth count. Or in my case, valley count. Two more teeth. One more teeth.
happens at six, seven, Go ahead and release one off this other side here. Yeah, that's pretty cool that you're getting to do the prom stuff for the kids. All right, where'd that go? There it is. Six teeth on each side, so good. A little bit better on tensioning. We are I think we are pretty much set right now. So we've got good equal tension there, and the belt itself is fairly well tensioned to start with there. Um, yeah, just going back through it, it was just way too loose, and I was having to crank those um, the belt tensioner is in way too much, but there's still plenty of, you know, playing the belts are not like super loose, um, but we've got good movement. Center, push it back. We got a little bit of a gap over on this side. So we'll tighten this side up some, and that should pull this end forward and loosen this or uh, tighten this side. Closer. Once again, you want to move your, your dancer around because that's going to move your belts around. We got a little bit of play on this side. When you when you tighten your belt, it does wind up each time you tighten one side or the other, it will tighten things up on both belts because you're, you know, both belts are an interplay with one another. You could have your belt nice and tight and 
feel like you have good movement, but you actually have too much tension on one belt, which kind of results in not enough on the other. Remember, this is a 0.5 pitch on the M3 screws. So each turn, you're only moving half a millimeter. So I mean, we're hitting, we're tight, but this has the ability to flop where this one doesn't. So. I'm kind of at a loss. Still have like a millimeter to go or something. I feel like I'm chasing ghosts here. This side's almost tightened in. This one still has plenty to go.
determine a loss. I'm a bit frustrated. I cannot seem to get these like fully tightened up against each other. I'm just being like, is there a slight difference in the print? And there may be just ever so slightly difference in the print as far as the height. So I may have been chasing just a printed part issue. Plus he's in here one last time. Yeah, I mean, they're hitting, but this piece slips down. But like I said, I think there's like just a hair difference in the print length of these parts belts feel decently good tension we'll we'll chase it down in um input shaping down the road i think that's good enough Good time to verify the tensioner block is parallel to the motor housing. 
the screws keep reaching up. Uh, this is just how to pull some out to get some extra tension. So we're done. Next up, we're going to move into the standard pool lock. And I'll uh, grab my coffee and keep an eye on chat real fast because I missed a little bit. Make my nexus. Glad you're here. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, this. So we had more tension on the Y than the X before we started belting. And in talking with Chris, he said there's a possibility that one of my Y rails was was twisted. And so I wound up taking this uh, x-axis plate off so that I could get to a flat level surface because this does sit proud of the frame. And took the whole printer downstairs. I took the, the corner pieces off so I get to the screws, took the whole printer downstairs, set it on its top, and it wobbled a bit. So I loosened the screws on all four corners and let it let the way the printer sit it flat, double checked, and the corners were good. So I made sure to use one, two block, one, two, three blocks on the inside corners, the outer edges, as I tightened everything back down to keep the Y rails from rotating as I was tightening them. Because as you tighten these, they have a tendency to rotate. And this end will rotate in and this will rotate out because of the way that you're turning those screws and it'll it'll twist your frame. So keeping it down on a large flat surface, in this case, my marble or granite countertop, I can't remember which one it is, um, really, 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 really helped. And I kept joking with Chris that, uh, uh, you know, I need to get a surface plate for um, the Milo build anyhow. Not for the actual build, but for validating some things on that build and for parts afterwards. And so he's he's actually, I think, trying to see if he can't source some smaller surface plate. So I might have to get me like a two to uh, like an 18 by 24 or 24 by 24 uh, three inch thick granite slab that's a surface block uh, or surface plate. But we'll see. That's going to be a down the road thing. Uh, let's see. Next up, like I said, we're going to work on the standard lock or standard tool lock. I think for the most part, we can build this on the table. We've got a Hall effect sensor, various screws, the NEMA 8 motor. Heat sets, cylindrical magnets, worm gears. So, Chris, there. This calls out for a print standard lock motor installation tool. That does not exist in the STLs. I verified last night. Um, I pulled down the latest zipped STLs off of blackbox3d.xyz, as well as I went to the GitHub and pulled the latest GitHub and looked. And that, that printed tool part does not exist. So, or at least it's not dropped out of CAD.
Okay. Sorry, I'm having to take a note. Because that's that's part of what we're doing here is we're validating the build and they are making updates on the fly to the online guides. Um and the printed guides as a whole are getting revised. Um you'll notice that on some of the steps, you'll have like a, a large paragraph and then you'll have an image, but only like the first line of the paragraph relates to that image, then the rest of that relates to the next image. So they're gonna be working on the spacing and layout of the manual. So it's best to lay out all the required hardware, identify new step, install tools, maybe printed in a less expensive material, such as PLA. Yes, yes, and yes. So we're gonna locate the M3 by 35 flathead hex screw and fully secure in the location shown below. So that's working on the back side of our, or I should say the front side of our tool head here, which is the printed part. And we're gonna use this front right hand corner here. That's where we're gonna put a M3 by 35 flathead screw. And this goes all the way through the printed part and will um, attach into the metal piece. Once again, since we're going through the printed part, we can't use any Loctite on this, but we're going all the way through and we're gonna screw this down. So that part done. Now locate the printed shim. Once again, this does not exist. I haven't seen it, I haven't found it. Um, I don't know if the previous tools will work. Um, so we'll, we'll have to eyeball this because this printed part doesn't exist in my file or the GitHub file. Guesses are, uh, no, they probably won't even show up in the CAD. So I couldn't even find it in the CAD and export. So I don't think any of the Printed tools show up in the CAD file. And yes, Mr. Wizix, you telling me to hydrate with coffee? Is that what that is? Um, so we're gonna need our NEMA eight. So what I'm gonna do is move some things around here. Rid of some baggies. Printed parts away. Um, also, those right here. May need them later on. And scoot this down. So we can work on our motor and stuff down on the table before we go ahead and install it. I think there's a few things that we can One of these days I'll make a little fancy motorized lifter upper. So we need our, our NEMA 8 motor, which should be our last motor. And let me just tell you guys, this is a cute little motor. Cute little motor. And it looks like that's a plug, but actually it's, I don't think that's a plug. It looks more like a two section clamped connector. We're gonna to have to just deal with these wires for now. That's our cute little NEMA 8 motor. Oh yes, this is tiny. This is a tiny little booger. So it says to snap that printed ring on here, which we don't have. So we're gonna to have to basically kind of eyeball the placement of the gear on. 
The gear we're going to put on here is our worm gear. Here are our worm gears. Let's put it flush on the installation tool. We're going to have to guess the gap. Pull for the grub screw, line up with the flat, put a M3 by 2 millimeter set screw. Oh my goodness. M3 by 2 millimeter set. Definitely don't uh, mistake these for peppercorn. Because once again, everything's oh so tiny. And it's on the end of our driver fairly good. Let's get a little bit of our Loctite on it. Line the worm gear up with the flat. And it does not fit. So, worm gear, no fitty on motor. Yes, that is a four millimeter shaft on the motor. And I'm not going to be able to do this with the caliper because it's too small. But that that is not a These are all I'll double check here. This is a got a couple of four millimeter shafts here. Four millimeter. This is not drilled for four millimeter. So we now have an issue. Mil. Got a bunch of three mil shafts here. I have a feeling this is going to be somewhere between a three and four millimeter.
Okay. That is a three millimeter shaft in there. So the hole in this worm gear is about a full millimeter smaller than it should be. So is I don't think Chris is here. Is Chris here? He lurking. Chris, oh Chris, oh Chris, are you lurking? I'm not seeing him in chat. Okay. I'm not seeing him in my console being on. But yeah, that's going to be an issue. And I've Yeah. Um So it's definitely got to be a 4 mil bore. I can try. And drill it on my drill press. We're not going to be able to do this piece. Um we won't be able to fit that motor piece right now because it's not correct. So I'm going to have to get with Chris to get one of these remade and actually have him look at his stock to make sure that these aren't all three millimeter inside diameter because none of them will fit on the motors. Um, we'll try and continue on to see how much of this we can do without having the motor installed. Um, but we might have to just skip this section and go into the, the actual tool dock piece. Do that, we would mount it there. Bolt with three screws. So far, I'm not seeing anything that we cannot work around. I do need to put a heat set in that piece. So let me make some room here and we'll do a heat set. Standard M3 heat set. And so that types of th type of thing happens. Um, we had an issue with the with the M5 nuts that go in the 4040 extrusion here. Or excuse me, they were supposed to be M4 and I had about 25 of them that were actually drilled to M drilled and tapped M5. And that was not Chris's fault. That was Chris does not stock M5 for 4040 series extrusion. 
Um, so that is a fault of what was shipped to him by the manufacturer. So he did go through, and I think he said like half of his stock was the incorrect size. So he's got to get that figured out with his uh, supplier. So this could just be another place where it's a supplier QC issue. Make sure that that's set. I think I have to do any more. So we'll go ahead and move this down out of the way so we can get our stuff set over here again. So this piece is going to go right over our key lock tool, like so. Just sit in there. There's a good cutout. Go ahead and mount these two here. So using we we should be able to get in and mount the motor with no problem later on. The the, the worm gear. That gets installed with M2 by 8 socket heads. And this up on the printed bracket. And we're going to install it with M3 by 25 screws. Line those up by hand, getting them started. Um, yeah, Chris has big problem or problems with his big T nuts. It affects some of us. Okay, so we got those two. Like I said, we'll we'll mount this motor a little bit later. If I need to take this back off and remount it, that's fine. Do that off screen. We'll need an M3 by 40 in this top left location. And an M3 by 8 in the lower location. So, and I just realized you guys can't even see what I'm talking about. I will fix that. Three eight and an M three Let's raise you guys back up here. Okay, so we got this plate put on there with two M3 by 25s. We're gonna take an M340 and it goes in the top. This is gonna go all the way through the printed parts into the metal part. And then M3 by eight is going into the lower screw here. This can't go all the way through because we had packed our um, our end stop.
Okay, so there we go. Um, locate the worm wheel, one to 40, five millimeter bore. See this guy. Place it on the T-lock shaft as shown. Push the worm wheel flush to the printed standard lock mount and orient the grub screw hole to face the flat at the end of the T-lock shaft. So, bigger gear side out. Check the worm wheel is centered on the worm when and then coat a M3 by five set screw with medium strength thread locker and ensure the worm wheel and secure the worm wheel to the T nut. This is an M5 by three or M3 by five. Popper three by two off. Five hot compound on there. It started in there before. Let's take the one out that's actually built into it. If the M3 by five will fit into it, if not, then we'll be using the other one. Yep. So the M3 by five set screw does not fit into it, so we can't use that one. We use the set screw that comes with it. Slide this on, it goes all the way back to the printed part. Line the set screw up and get it started. Keep wiggling it as you tighten it to make sure that we get lined up on the flat. Fully. Good. But I'll get dug up for a minute. All right, so that's there. So we got T nuts that don't fit. We'll need to make a note of that and get that to Chris. Hey, Shenanigan, how's it going? So, that there. And no set screw already in this. Let me grab this tiny thing again and see if it fits it in there. Okay, so this at least fits into the uh, worm gear drive. So how's it going, shenanigans? Hope you're doing well. We made some progress, moved into chapter five, which is the um, shaft lock mechanism. However, we're running into some issues. 
Um, I'm not going to say these are a Chris issue, but it's a an issue nonetheless. We had a printed part that was called out that is nowhere to be found. Hey, thanks for the follow, uh, Bear Grills. And also, we're going to have... Let me back up here for a second. We'll call it a section six page six. This is the uh, arm gear. One by forty is uh, Okay, so we've got an issue where the bore in our worm gear here is supposed to be four millimeter, and it's not. That is a three millimeter hole, so it won't fit on the motor. Therefore, we cannot install the worm gear or the worm drive. Therefore, we can't mount our motor. I guess we could technically mount the motor. We should be able to then put the worm gear in because it does have a spot for the um free to access the thing and i just looked i'm i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to just keep going to the next section and i'm gonna have to take this back off because there's no way i'm gonna get the worm gear against this gear you gotta have the worm gear on, then slide this gear on and tighten it down. Because there's otherwise I'm gonna have to basically be feeding and twisting this as I go into the worm gear. The other note we have I'm going to be down here on page fifteen. This is the worm wheel. Already has a uh, set screw. Called for M3 by 5 set screw. Too small. So, sorry, just having to take some notes because we're we are finding some issues with parts and issues with the manual calling out for some. Hey, why not? Because thank you for coming in and hanging out. Starting on the Irk for that you want to finish, but had yeah, I I've been by so we had issues with the Irk for V2 on Tuesday where during the calibration, all of a sudden the encoder just stopped working. 
Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. I went back and bypassed it and I've been printing parts on it, ABS parts. Um, so I am printing, give me a second here. These are modular filament um, drawers by Rob Callen. So they use, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, drawer slides, half mil or a half inch conduit, and the rest of it is 3D printed parts. And you can either put a 3D printed faceplate or a machined, uh, uh, like plywood faceplate or whatever, but they slide out, they slide in, and they'll have a soft close feature. And I should be able to get uh, six to seven spools deep, and it's going underneath my my table here. So I'll be able to stack probably if I go all the way across, I'll probably be able to get a hundred plus rolls of filament underneath the shelf here and they'll be all you know all screwed together and screwed down through the base to the uh half inch mdf underneath so i've been printing those uh square face panels because they work better on the 350 than the 300 um and i've been printing out those just using up some different ABS that I have. Um, so I'm going to have those at the bottom. I may put another shelf in and then run some drawers and have just a, you know, a gap like that of a, of a long shelf here that I can put some tools up underneath as well to keep some things out of the way. Trying to make better use of this. Um, so we're going to have to take this wheel off. We know that. There's a part that we're going to screw on to this face and these two holes that are on the face. And that part will look like this. Okay. And we're going to need to put a magnet in that part. Move these things back here. This back over here where you guys can see a little bit. You guys a little bit closer. Bring you guys back down some. Okay. Um what do we need here? We need a 1.1 1 .1 by 1.1 1 .1 magnet goes into our tiny tubes of magnets. 3 by 3, 3 by 2. One eight. One eight. I thought I had all the magnets in there, but I am not seeing that size. Three by three, two by two, two by six. All right, let me start digging around here in some of the other parts containers because 
M meaning a different magnet. Look in the miscellaneous other box and then the electronics box to see if we've got those magnets somewhere else. In that one, stop and stop Legos or Okay. Oh, we need to add that to the list of things because I do not see a one by eight by one by eight magnet in here. very sized magnets the closest thing i'm going to have is a m2 by six and that's going to be way too long for them. one more note page 16 And this might be one of the pieces. Oh, hey, Chris, how's it going? You're on your way home? Oh, you're at the uh, office? Okay, Chris, um, we have a couple of parts that are out of spec. The NEMA 8 motor shaft is four millimeters, and it references four millimeters in the manual when putting on the worm gear. The bore in the worm gear for mounting it is three millimeter. And I tested that with a three millimeter shaft that I had on hand. So the worm drive gears do not have the correct center bore to mount them on the NEMA 8 motors. Exactly. So this is another thing where it may have been a supplier QC issue, like on the, uh, what was it, slot 18 nuts for the 4040, where half the ones were uh, M5 drilled and threaded versus M4. So this is a three millimeter bore versus a four millimeter bore on that worm drive. And then also the worm wheel, the, the, the drive gear wheel, um, it says to use an M3 by five set screw on it in the manual. Uh, M3 screw goes right through the hole. It's actually got an M4 threaded set screw already in the wheel. So I just use that one instead. But you're saying to use a M3 magnet use a three by three but this printed part it's there's no way it's going in the slot for this printed part so either there's a new version of the printed part or if i'm using a three an m3 on here it's it's going to be an m3 like direct surface mount I'll have to see if there's a new version of this part there for the M3. I'm, well, I'm pretty sure that that is not an M3 hole. We'll check it out though. Mm 
it might be close enough that I can frame that part and make it fit though. Yeah, that should fit. I'll just have to ream that hole. So, page 16. Once again, you're going to want to have a fairly tight fit on this, and you'll use um, you know use your uh, what you call it CA glue to hold it in place. But if we're going to go with an M3, then use an M3 reamer. Make sure that that hole is M3. This is real close to the edge, so I'm going to do this by hand. Ream this hole out by hand to make sure that it free goes in. Again, reamers will get you a more spec tolerant hole, and it'll be perfectly round. So use a reamer, not a drill. And that fits in nicely. See, so yeah, that's that'll work. Um got a little bit of slip to it, so let me we'll have to grab the PA glue. And it will sit slightly ever 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 so slightly um above the front you want it flush with the back of the hole or the part because of where we're going to mount this currently Gotten this too close to the activator last night. Stop so I can get a bead going. And like I said, that part will sit ever so slightly up from the front, and you want it up from the front like that. So it should be flush on one side of the printed part. Let that dry and activate. This will um, and so we're gonna we're gonna screw this down on one side with an M two by five, 
through the crescent slot that's on here, and then we'll be able to move this around and line it up perfectly. This magnet is what's going to be used to trigger the Hall effect sensor that will mount over the top of this. Let's there finish drying. Um, all right, not a problem, Chris. Not a problem. M2 by 5 button head screw. And that's going to be the other marking this. Oh, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Center panel is the weird one that has all the image. There we go. M2 by, M2 by 5 button head. Super duper tiny. Always fun. And you've got to be very, very, very careful with these small button heads. Um, they, the heads strip out on these like barely blinking at. So as soon as you feel the slightest amount of, call it back pressure on this, stop. Oh, you're good. So once again, we're just going to line this up with one of the holes that's on the outside edge of the, or on the worm gear. And slug that down. So once again, this magnet then becomes the trigger mechanism for a Hall effect sensor we're going to put. And we'll adjust this as. In fact, I'll look at the work that now. But we'll we'll set that as we need to, and then we'll put the last black stop in place. This will go in with a M three by. Six socket head screw. And once again with the connector facing up. Going to mount in that. M3 threaded insert that we put in place. You make my Nexus. Thank you for the uh, gifting a tier one sub to 23 Blue Dude. Awesome. And like I said, we'll have to take the. We'll have to take a couple of these things back off in order to mount our motor and our worm drive. That's not a problem. We'll we'll make that happen. We'll probably do that off stream once we figure out the worm drive. 
Thanks for gifting the sub there, Maker Mind Nexus. And with that, passing the black stop. Put a couple more M3 by six at the bottoms. We should be done with this. There you go. Congratulations. We finished all the steps for the standard remote lock. Uh, we'll have to come back and, and do some things. Like I said, the worm drive we need to fix. Um, it's definitely got a three millimeter inside diameter hole, so I can't mount that to the motor. We can't mount the motor in. In order to get the motor mounted in, because of the way this will mount in there, I can either kind of hold the gearing like that and then insert the motor from the top, and then put in my set screw uh, or, or something. But I'll figure that out off stream once we get this figured out. Um, I, I would have to verify that my drill press is directly at 90 degrees. Figure out a good clamping mechanism where I don't destroy the threading on this. Um, and then I can try and re-drill this out to four millimeters. Um, probably drill it and then ream it, make sure. Then we can, you know, use this, um, and or have Chris send me a new one of these that is properly four millimeters, because this is just no, no bueno, no goes on the shaft, right? So uh, we'll have to we'll have to hold off and work on that. But for now, we'll go over to the tool dock, and I believe epoxy, CA glue, blah, 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 cap, bunch of parts, and installation tool, a bunch of other parts. So the tool docks. I'm going to take the printer and move it down to the to the floor. But I believe this is going to be bench stuff. So we can do this build primarily on the bench, and then attach it in one section. Ooh, we get to do heat stats, we get to do some tapping. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set this down on the ground and bring some things over to the bench. Oh. Okay, so we got our tap set. Mayhem, welcome on in. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well today. Hey, make mine. Thank you for gifting uh, Mayhem a tier one sub. I appreciate that. We'll bring you guys back down here. We will lay out our towel so we'll be able to see. You know some of the black parts on on a black table better. We're gonna scoot this over here. 
So I can sit down for whatever reason my lower back's tensing on. Don't know why. Welcome on in. Welcome on. We've got our belt run and done the initial tensioning on it. Uh, we've got the uh, the the tool. Um, oh, what you call the tool lock mechanism done to a degree. We've we ran into an issue where our worm drive here. The bore in this is three millimeter and it's supposed to be a four millimeter. So Chris is on his way from the shop back home and he'll he'll take note of this and he'll have to see if he's got any four millimeters. And I may see about um tucking this up in a vise and drilling this out to four millimeters on my on my uh, drill press. I just got to make sure that it's definitely, you know, 90 degrees so I don't bore this at an angle. Oh yeah, Twitch Turbo is definitely easier on the on the uh, budget. So, we're going to take our tool dock parts, which where did I put those at? I know I pulled those out and set them aside. We'll need this printed part. Seriously, where did I put the uh, tool dock? Where I just pulled these out now. Using this as well. Not in there. I'm losing my mind again. I was getting everything laid out. I had it all laid out. Now, missing the part. Why do I do this to my? Let's look through here and see if I toss them in here when I was looking for stuff earlier. Okay. I'm seriously at a loss of words right now.
You guys didn't see me toss a thing of parts around, did you? I don't feel like I did. In the garbage. Onyx mount. Huh. No, apparently I just never took them out. How about that? They're in one of the filament boxes. Exactly. No, apparently the bag that I took out was for the tool lock not the tool dock. So, I hope we're gonna need all of these. We've got our five tool dock parts. And we're gonna use our M3 by Five by excuse me, zero point five thread pitch tap. We're gonna thread some locations here. And we're doing these two holes here on the end, and we're threading them all the way down to these four millimeter holes. So once again, we're going to extend our our tap all the way down through the M4 hole because the first like millimeter and a half of this is in a, a chamfer, so it's not actually cutting threads until about right here. So. And see, this is what I like is more of like a production type thing where we go in and we're like, okay, let's do all the taps for all five parts at the same time. Then we'll go through and we'll do heat sets on all five parts at the same time. And we'll do, you know, we'll get everything set up. We'll build all of the sub assemblies and then we'll mount it on the printer at once. It may jump around just to get all of these done and all the sub assemblies done prior to mounting anything on the physical printer. Just to save ourselves the, the trouble and the pain of lifting these printers up and down and up and down. So what I was doing was I was I was printing out the all the parts and putting them in, in bags and basically they were sitting in the zero G. Because for whatever reason I haven't been printing on the zero G lately. So I need to solve that. Because the zero G prints so darn well. Need to get just pick one of the hell divers um two helmets that has been released by galactic armory and get one of those sliced up and start printing it on the larger zero g that is based on the ender five plus that's downstairs i'm sure that's going to be a multi-day print
One done, four more to go. That's the other reason for having a paper towel is so you can kind of capture all of the uh, all the shavings from doing your tapping. When I'm doing this by hand, I do have a set of speed taps, like drills and taps at the same time. Um, I could possibly use that. I think I might have a three millimeter on that. But, you know, also going way faster and, you know, you're going to generate more heat in the part may lead to some other issue. It's just doing this by hand. Once again, this is polycarbonate carbon fiber. Just doing this by hand, the uh, the tap gets warm. The last thing you want to do is run a speed tap in here and after three or four, you're running a hot tap in and you're more Melting plastic being cutting plastic. I do do use those, and I did buy them when I was tapping the frame for the zero G that's behind me. And I've got I'll say probably three quarters of another zero G frame uh, already cut to length. I just need to drill and tap it so I can start putting together another one. And welcome on in, Hybrid Robotics. How are you doing today? Um, and then also for the Milo Mini Mill, Milo. Uh, one five, they have a Casa enclosure. Um, it's still in beta. It hasn't been uh, finalized yet, but I'm probably going to build an enclosure for it so I'm not sending metal chips everywhere because that will be a dedicated metal and like high density plastic type cutter where acrylic and stuff like that I'll still do on the Shape Oco. Um, so I'm going to build a um, an enclosure for it. But I did see where they're coming out with version 2 of that enclosure soon, so I'm not going to start cutting and building it just yet until the latest rev comes in. But I did get a 10 pack of two meter long T slot to do that with. And I'll probably modify the design up if they don't, because I know version one used, um, oh, like the, the corner uh, joints, the actual corner brackets. Versus doing like blind joints. And I would probably wind up drilling and tapping it for blind joints. Because I like blind joints better. And I would rather do the blind joints and then maybe add angle brackets for additional stiffness if needed. We've made some good progress so far, Hybrid. We've belted the XY motors and got that motion system set up and, and the belts initially tensioned. We installed the locking tool mechanism on the gantry 
but we have some issues. It's not complete because we have some parts issues. Uh, the worm drive gear is supposed to have a four millimeter bore to it to sit on the, mo the NEMA 8 motor shaft. And it is not a four millimeter. It's, a, it's drilled for a three millimeter bore. So I got to get with KB3D Chris. And it's probably a supplier issue because he says they don't even stock them in three millimeter. I get. So it's a, another supplier QC issue. Um, and he'll see if he's got an extra one that's the correct size. Get it shipped out to me. If not, um, or even if so, I may try and take that three millimeter one. If I could get it properly uh, uh, set up in my drill press and get everything uh, properly fastened and verified a good 90 degree on my Harbor Freight drill press, then I will try and up drill it to a four millimeter bore. And of course, ream it to make sure it's four millimeters. Yeah, I hope everybody's having a good Saturday and that everything's going well, uh, that your morning's going good. Just trying to blow the chips out of the hole. So we're tapping down into a four millimeter hole. We're, we're tapping an M3 down into a four millimeter board hole, which is which will be where we're going to have some four millimeter um, pens going in and the M3 set screws will go into there to hold those four millimeter pens, the alignment pins. Just making sure that we're tapped all the way through to the far end of the hole. Broccoli and chicken, that sounds good. I had ordered some Domino's yesterday. I got pizza and some, what, what their wings, one of their wings, and I ate the wings last night and just put the pizza in the fridge. I have pizza for lunch, dinner, maybe something tomorrow. Not eaten yet. Take care of yourself, Fredda. Those of you that have nice weather, because I've got like 67 degree weather here today. At least it's 67 right now. We're going to get closer to, to the 70s today. So. Got good weather and by all means enjoy it. Don't do things to enjoy the day. Keep your apartment at 70. Yeah, I uh, 
during the winter time, I had the heater set to 68 in this room because it's above the garage and the highest point of the house. So it always gets hot in here. And I was trying, well, it, it stays warm in here, so I was trying to keep the heater from running all the time and getting too hot. Um, and especially I can heat it up just by running printers well. I did that a lot. But I got up this morning and I was like, okay, heat set to 65. It's supposed to get down in the 50s. I had two printers that were running prints into the night when I went to bed. I got up here this morning and it was 74 degrees in here. Now, mind you, it was 50 something overnight outside. So. AC went on. I'm wearing shorts today. It's gonna be good. Had a couple of feet of snow the other day at uh, Colorado, which is where Miss Dragon's at. And I had to tell her, I was like, yeah, I'm at the office today. Sorry that it's snowing, but hey, it's, you know, I went to work this morning. It was 44 degrees outside and I'm going and I was wearing a, you know, a hoodie, sweatshirt hoodie. And when I left, it was 80 degrees and I was sweating in my t-shirt and jeans. We're into that season, and of course, we call it the great pollinating season because all of my pine trees around me are starting to let loose their pollen. Telling me, I uh, I went ahead and took some Benadryl this morning before the stream. Just one, because if I took two, it would. It would have knocked me out. We wouldn't have been streaming this. There's the tap for done. I think next up is going to be doing um, sets. I will take these and just set them up here for a second. Go dump all of this. Um, all of these chips over here in the garbage. Hopefully get them in the garbage. Here we go. He's out of the way. Need the self press up here. Do some heat set insert. And these are all the M3 heat set inserts. So Once again, I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take and just do this in a assembly line fashion. So we'll do each one of these. Just do the same procedure on all of them. What I'm doing with my desk is I should be flush. I'm verifying flush and then I'm running it along the side. That'll burnish it down and take off any of the filament that kind of raised up on the edge. Now I watch Chris sit there and use an exacto knife. 
some type of blade to shave off the top, you know, this stuff that gets pressed up. But I find this works just as well. And I don't have to um, get out the blade, which, you know, I cut myself with a In the last one for this first couple. So Pez, I got a question for you. Um, I haven't heard you talk about your cocoa press much. You've been printing with your cocoa press, and are you are you still getting good prints out of it? You're still trying to find somebody to come help you with your printer. Uh oh, what's what's wrong with the printer again, Prendo? Which printer? In the kitchen, you'll restart print soon. Okay. So we're gonna print, or we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna do four inserts on the back side. So these were on the lower side. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the four holes on the lower side over here. So, same type of thing. We'll just pin these up, drop them in. Burnish the edge of the hole.
Uh, Dave's make stuff is just models specifically for Cocoa Press. Ooh, nice. Okay. Gotcha. You just need to get it assembled or reassembled and, and a clog fix. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, um, K Dragon, for whatever reason, I was, was printing just standard ABS with a obsidian nozzle and it clogged. And I tried to you know, do what I did the last time, which was, um, I set the heat gun right up here with the with the shield on it, so I could hold it by the end here, heat it up, heat it up, and then pull as much as I could out of the back, and then put a um, I've got a we'll call it a reamer to push the filament out, you heat it up, push it out, and I still could not get it to. Um, to release so i think what i'm going to do is give this an acetone soak let the acetone eat the you know break the abs down so i for whatever reason i got i i know what happened was i was i was doing a print and the filament spool ran out and when it did um the end of the filament, um, it was on a, uh, it was a refill spool. So the end of the filament didn't pop out, so it would just run through and run out. So I think it carbonized and cooked the filament that got ground down in the extruder, so it couldn't push anymore, and the rest of it carbonized in the nozzle. So, yeah, I'll just run that through an acetone soap, which should dissolve the ABS. Hopefully it doesn't do anything else to the nozzle. Yeah, it happens occasionally. That's why I got so many extra nozzles. And that's the nice thing with the, uh, with a Revo, is if you get a clog like that, you know, unscrew it, just take the whole nozzle out, put a new nozzle in, keep printing. And then, now the only difference is like, the nozzle that's in there now is not an obsidian, it's a regular one. So I just have to make sure I don't throw any glass filled or carbon filled in that particular printer until I get the obsidian back in it. The Trident 350, though, uh, which has the Betas Next G uh, hot end that I had during the beta test, it's running a Betas tungsten carbide 0 0.6 nozzle now, and it's pretty happy with it. Once I uh, realized I was running a 0.6 in it and not a 0.4, I was able to change my you know, change over to the appropriate uh, slicer settings. So that helped. And when I did that, I took the standard 0.6 nozzle out and put in the 0.6 tungsten carbide I had bought for it.
So we start working on the tools on this build, which will be the next section after the dock would be the FDM tools. Um, we're going to be putting together three Revos with high flow uh, heater cores on them. And they'll be pushing 0 06 um, uh, obsidian nozzles. Now I noticed that KB3D just got in or has finally gotten in the 06, or actually the obsidian high flow nozzles. So I may have to do those down the road. And then the fourth one is going to be a standard E3V6 so that I can try out different nozzles and stuff, but it's going to have a titanium heat break, a nickel plated copper heat block with a with a heavier duty heater in it so it'll heat up quicker. And I've got a 0 0.6 uh, uh, slice works um, or slice engineering gamma nozzle. That's a hardened steel nozzle. So I'll be able to run any of the filaments through there. Okay, so there's six with three heat sets in. Looks like we're done with the heat sets, or at least for now. So we'll go ahead and put this down off the table and see what else. We're going to use M5 by 10 neodymium magnets. We're going to use these, uh, repeat these steps to build up all five tool docks. So it's important to keep the polarity of the magnets and direction during the assembly will keep you from tool docking issues later in the build. Or using epoxy if necessary. Be the first page of step. Yes, that's. Hopefully, we will not need epoxy. And M5 by 10 magnet. Got those here. Oh, nice. Oh, hopefully uh, you win that hybrid. Hey, Otters Danger Den, welcome in. 
I decided to uh, have a seat. My lower back's hurting. Probably something to do with moving black box around so much in the uh, in the uh, 350 Trident. So let's put these back up because we're done with them for now. Or at least it's a nice way of saying I'm I'm being lazy. But yeah, no, the back is a little sore. Okay, so the center hole here is where we're going to put the M5s, and we want to maintain the same polarity. So the best way to do that that I found is literally let them join together like that. And then go same direction, top to bottom. And these are going to be very, very tight holes because once again, it was printing like this. So these holes are pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is get my, these are five millimeter by 10 millimeters. So we're going to grab our five millimeter reamer. Get another ear one back in there. Just going to do this by hand. We're just going to ream out the hole. And that'll make sure that these are five millimeters, so that that'll be a good press fit on the on the uh, magnets. And like we said, if doing this turns it from a good friction press fit to a fair, uh, not a, I don't want to say a loose loose fit, but if we have fears of it being too loose, then we can use a little bit of epoxy or CA glue to hold them in. we go. And just like I said, our just an operation. Put them down in there, same direction. Now, these are obviously going to be loose. So they are going to have to be epoxied in there. Um, So let me scroll through here and see, because it did say if before using epoxy, if necessary, see the first page of step four. I don't know where step four is, so that's what I'm going to try and find. Probably another section of, hey, use some epoxy here. Okay. The Cool, cooler orient is shown. Okay, now I see. So these blah, 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 blah. the magnets will 
will protrude through the cooler. So what we need to do is make sure that our magnets will sit right through these coolers and they don't need to be further moved down. Yeah, exactly, turtle crawler. However, um, I did read to the bottom of the holes, so uh, I played idiot. And that's what I should have done is just to either just used a uh, deburring tool to deburr the lip a little bit to just get them started and then nipix them in. Because now I am going to have to epoxy them because they're a loose fit now. But what will happen is this will sit like this and these five sit right there. Put this down in there, properly lined up, possibly, properly lined up, Who's the other? why is it not working? Oh. Mystery. Lost that. Yeah, those will sit down in there nice. We just need to get them epoxied in now. We'll mix up a small batch of epoxy and squish those in there. This off. So how you doing, Turtle? It was good chatting with you last night. I haven't chatted with you in, in actually a while. Working on the uh, zero G build. Okay, stir stick. Uh, For example, do you? Roughly even sizes. And take your stick and mix them together. Stuff from the outside into the middle. Get it fully mixed.
Good. Pull your plug. Pull. Get it back in. We do have a couple of seconds here where we can clean up any excess that popped out of the hole with a, um, you know, with some IPA or acetone. We do make sure that the there's a good amount of epoxy in here to make sure that these stick in. The other thing we want to do is make sure that these don't push out or rise up on the epoxy. So we we'll want to put some type of weight on these to hold them in because that is what happened on my uh, on my X plate was we had the the stuff rose up on the epoxy. We're going to have clearance issues with these if we if we don't uh, address that. So Double check those in a little bit. Just scroll back up to the top.
Okay, so we'll press fit in our M4s. And we'll do a little bit easier here. If we go to press fit these in and we need to, then we will use, you know, we'll, we'll I'm going to have to wait a little bit, but we'll, um, we'll open the top part of the hole up and then use the Nipix to press fit them in. We'll hold off on that for the time being while we let the epoxy set up a little bit. Of course, there's so many things that we could be adding to this part, but now we're waiting to let it. Uh... Okay, here's something we can start working on. Uh, we've got our tool wiper pieces. While we let this sit here and, you know, underweight to keep those parts in while they dry. Okay, we need some more heat set inserts done. And these, once again, were M3 inserts. And note that the Outer two, the, the two on the outer edge here are coming in from this side. The two inner ones come in from the back side. So we'll go through and install these while we're waiting for our stuff to dry. Hey, Miss Dragon, how's it going? Um, I should have licenses that that we can use. I believe I have some available licenses. Okay. In the place, are you talking about like micro center? Because if so, I still haven't thought about placing an order, but I'm sure I can come up with something.
you know. All right, now the two in the back come in. The other two come in from the back. So there's no real easy way to hold these to get them aligned straight up and down. So we'll get them close, and this is where we'll definitely use the back of the bench to even these out and make sure that they're nice and flush. Hey, Pete, how's it going, friend? We are trucking right along. Um, we've got the um, we got the belts installed, and we got the tool lock mechanism. I'll say ninety-ish percent installed. There's a an issue we have with the worm gear that's supposed to have a four millimeter bore in it, but it only has a three millimeter. So it won't fit on the motor. So we're gonna have to address that, but we're gonna do that off stream. And moved on to the tool dock. And I'm waiting for some epoxy to set up on some magnets over here. So I just moved forward and we're doing some more heat sets on other parts. Okay. 
One last one. Should be able to go over and work with our magnet. All those for now will unplug that and then we will jump back up check on our magnets here. Should be able to pull that off and my magnet stayed behind, which is good. I'm going to check fitment on this. We're going to put it through the hole here. So, this is how these are going to mount. Um, with two screws through the front, you want to make sure that that magnet is not proud of this aluminum plate. If it is, then you will have problems um, with proper cooling. This one, we got a little bit of excess epoxy that's going to keep it from sitting flush. So, see if we can just that set epoxy came up and out off of the magnet. Basically, you should be able to see there what I'm talking about. There was a little bit of epoxy that was sitting proud that came out. I tried to wipe it all off, but apparently I didn't get it all off. If I can scrape this off the magnet now. And recheck my fitment. Now it sits down there. We're flush with the part, and that magnet is sitting just shy of the top of the surface, so we're good. We are five for five on the fitment there, so we can move on. Let's sit over here on the side and continue to harden up. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. And we'll keep going. So we need to put some four millimeter shafts in. I'll grab my bag of shafts. And we're looking for the M4 by 30 shafts. Toss those out now. So M4 by 30s, we're going to put two of these in each one. And these are going in the top holes, not the oblong holes, but the other ones. Now, if these are a tight fit, which they are, um, once again, I will try and just use my... Um, deburring tool and see if I can't open the top up a little bit. 
to get it started and then we'll press fit them. Because what I don't want to do is get them all the way in and then they're they're loose and we have to epoxy them in again. And I don't want to damage the part either. I think what I'll do is we'll 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 do what uh Turtle Crawler was suggesting earlier. We'll use an M4 tap. But we're not going to tap all the way through, we're just going to tap partially through. So that we can we'll get in order. There we go. We'll tap part way through, not all the way through. And that way we can start to get it uh, inserted. And press fit it the rest of the way into the printed part. So it stays nice and, and tight, snug. Now these are the aligning pins, so we really need to make sure that these are 90 degree perpendicular. But we also need to be careful when we're doing this reaming that we're not putting an angle in the hole. Gonna be. It's gonna be a tight fit. Um, need our largest set of the Nipix here. Once again, our Nipix are um, smooth jaw. So. Didn't have a problem with any surface marring. It's just I'm going really, really slow because I I hope I don't hear a crack. There we go. Nice and flush.
There's one. Make your mind, you're back. So we did a little bit of reaming because our holes were fairly tight and we had to do a little bit of reaming so that we get the four millimeter dowel pin started. And then we're coming in with our Nipix, making it too long. We're starting to set them slowly. Low, constant pressure. We don't want to try and slam it in one big shot because if we do that, we could potentially crack the part. Lining up with very nice and flush parts. They're nice and straight. I do want to thank KB3D Chris again. Uh, these Nipix pliers were a Christmas gift from KB3D. And these things have been great. I've used them on just about every build since I've had them. Really good for doing these press fits. Like I said, just go nice and slow. And you stand a good chance of not cracking your part on this really tight tolerance press fit. And when I say tight tolerance, I mean it because see the way that looks there? Let, let me clear off the uh, the filament that was on top of it. I mean, it's actually pushing out a tad bit of filament with these pens. But that's what we want. We really want that tight fit. Like I said, these are the uh, these are the engagement pins.
Yeah, these these were printed on the Annex Engineering K3. And they're printed in polycarbonate carbon fiber. And I have been seriously impressed with the tolerances and the quality of these prints. Now I do have um, a couple of other sections to still print parts for, uh, which is uh, what the water cooling and the enclosure. I still need to print the parts for. And once again, it's polycarbonate CF, so that means that I've got to uh, I'll bake the filament through a couple of sessions just to make sure it's nice and good and dry, and then. Um, uh, come back afterwards and print those pieces. And that that filament's been sitting over in a Sunlu dryer this whole time. I just need to uh, pick it on and dry it again. We clean up these shavings again. All right, next day. Now we're going to install our M3 by 6 set screws. And really? battery die? Well, that stinks. Battery's dead. I have to go get another battery. Um, set screws. These were M3 by 6. And we're going to run these set screws down. And once again, these are. Um, whatchamacallit, uh, we threaded these, uh, tapped these threads, so they're tap threads in plastic, but what we're going to do is we're running the set screws through these holes to hold these pens in place. Now with as press fit as they are, I don't think we're going to have an issue for a long while, but this will be an enclosed printer, so... Not sure if we'll have any heat creep with the polycarbonate CF parts or not. We're going to take this down until we feel it bottom out on the M4 uh, post, like right there. And maybe the tiniest of a turn, like an eighth of a turn. And that's it. Any more, and you can strip those cap threads. And you you just undid everything that you were doing. All right, Mayhem, have fun. Okay, there we are. A little bit of a turn. That one's. All right, hybrid. Have fun. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you get that printer up and running soon.
And I don't know if you guys can tell, but as I'm screwing this in, I'm not really holding it very hard. Um, I'm, I'm barely holding my screwdriver or my driver. And that's basically like, you know, having a low power or a, a clutch on your drill and just setting it really, really low. So as I'm going in, I've got just enough to turn it. But as soon as it hits that pin, my hand's going to slip around the knurling. And then I know that's why I can go back and do the, the little bit of a tighten and be done. Okay, so I just hit it. Boom, tighten, done. Install a printed tool dock wire guide and secure it with an M3 by 8 flathead screws or M3 by 8 flathead. There's our screws. We'll put the rest of these up. And we were grabbing the uh, those parts. I do not, whoops, you can say, I do not, yes, I do. They were just in a different bag. So we've got these wire clips. They're just going to get mounted on the bottom left hole here with a flathead M3 by eight screw. Just make sure it's nice and and vertically aligned.
do it just like that. So we're almost at three o'clock. Let's see how much more we can get done in the next hour. I want to end by four. Um, I'm going to need to get some food. See how far we can get on this before noon. So those are on. Now we're going to need some PCBs, and these are in the electronics, right? We're starting to get into some tool head boards. Gonna pop all these out. And these are gonna get installed with M3 by six socket head cap screws. Like a hood cap screws, so we'll swap our drivers out. And the portion, right? So it's just two four pin connectors. That's going to be facing down. So we'll mount just like that. Now, I notice that we've got exposed pins back here. I'm surprised there's not like a backer or something. Huh. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not like a backer or something that's holding that proud so you don't uh, crush those.
don't want to flex that board. I want to be careful so you're not going to crank these all the way down super tight. Otherwise, you'll flex those boards on those pins. And you could damage the boards. And just make sure that your connectors are facing, I'll say, downward towards the wire tie down point that you just installed. Okay, so those five boards are on the back. Then it says, do this for the other four remaining tool docks. Well, we did them all at the same time. Now we're on to the tool wipers. We already got our heat set inserts started. Now we're going to grab panel pieces here. So we've got these five channel pieces, just like that with a, with a channel on them. And we'll have some silicone uh, strips. Assuming that'll be in the other miscellaneous box. I've been known to be wrong. They're not there. Product's not in the miscellaneous. Um, really aren't any other options. Oh. These may actually be in the FDM tool um, packages. The get some things moved out of the way here. Yes. So your FDM tool kits will have these rubber pieces. So. Now you've got a couple of different types here. And it looks like we're using this one because it's a solid piece without the um, the holes cut into them. That's the one that you'll need. Uh, 
I'll just sit in that foot. And I think I've only got four because I'm only building four tools. So the fifth one will probably be, or, or not going to probably be, the fifth one will be missing. We'll put it in there blank for now. And actually, I'm only going to have three of them because that's right. The fourth kit is still on order with Chris. Um, it's it's the stuff that will come to me. I think they're still waiting on the linear wiring harnesses. Once the linear wiring harnesses get in, he'll send me the last one with that set. We'll have three of these done up, though. So this is going to get installed from the inside at the bottom here, clamping our uh, rubber piece or silicone piece in there. We're going to be using M3 by 10 flat head screws. Super. Okay. And like I said, I'll put these in here and I'll just do the, I'll do all of them. It's just two of them won't have a, um, a silicone piece. You think about this, and that to clean out the threads on here. All I'm trying to do right now is just clean up the extra filament that gets pushed behind the uh, um, the heat set insert so it doesn't foul the threads that I'm trying to screw into. And this does have some amount of adjustability, so we'll be able to adjust the height of these um, screws and these little silicone pieces um, just by, we'll just loosen the screw, lift up the piece some, throw it back down, the squish the silicone. Now that'll be right at your nozzle height. That's in essence how you'll set it up. 
we'll go ahead and get the rest of these mounted. Getting these threads out as we go. I don't know if we'll be able to get this section done today. See how close we are at four. We can see about pushing forward. Thinking which one we make sure dead on battery so far. What's everybody uh, thinking about that new Orange Giga that folks are starting to unbox and build? I think there's a market niche for it, but I mean, that's it's just a huge printer, right? And anytime you have a huge printer like that, it's either going to be printing things like huge PLA prints, or if you're gonna be doing engineering filaments, now it's, you're gonna need a chamber heater because there's no way the bed and the um, hot end alone are gonna heat that chamber up, that volume, to any appreciable amount. These, we're not going to have a silicone, but I still need to clean out the holes so that we're prepared for when we get the silicone.
pull it up in the last one. This is probably not an approved use of your hex wrenches, by the way, but. Okay, those five are done now. Okay, the printed part and install heat set insert. These out of the way. Get our heat set insert us up here again. These are M3s. So a couple of heat press inserts here. Nice getting flat and flush. Not in progress.
last one. Okay, we're going to need M3 by 10 socket head cap screws. Those that's the way. And we're gonna need those wiper pads, the other wiper pads that we had. We we'll need those now. Once again, we'll have three sets of these. Um, the fourth and fifth one we won't use because um, we're only putting four tools in to start with, and we've only got three of the FDM toolkits so far. We'll add the, the fourth one once we get the pair package from KB3D. So, are these going to go? We've got a base. Locate the silicone nozzle wipers and print in two print nozzle wiper part three. These are these little guys. So we go this part, one of our nozzle wipers, two of these. No, there is an offset. The offset is, I'll say towards the, you'll see how these are offset. So you match the offsets up. And three by 10. Okay. 
three by ten. These nozzle wipes can be, um, ooh, my bad. No, I'm three by two. So you put in one nozzle wipe, those two spacers, and then another nozzle wipe, silicone piece. And you're sandwiching these spacers between the nozzle wipe. Once again, I'm pretty sure like the heights of all of these will be figured out once we start setting up our actual tools. We'll mod you know, these are adjustable, so we'll be able to slide them up and down to modify the height. So all of these pieces are slightly um, offset, so it should make lining things up a little bit easier. Three of these set up, and the the last one we'll just have to wait on silicone.
I'm feeling like I lost everybody. Like I said, the other two, I'm just going to go ahead and make, you know, set them up as placeholders. Oh, here, no, okay. Well, there you guys are. Working on switch wire and listening, okay. And how's switch wire coming along, uh, Dan? As well as breaking down boxes, I need to do that. I, I've got a bunch of boxes that I need to break down and get ready to go to recycle. What printed parts are you missing? Any more working on the grandkids printer? Awesome. There you go. All right. So now what? Here's the nozzle wiper sub assembly to the main nozzle wiper assembly using two more M3 by 10 socket head screws. Awesome. So this goes to the inside. I'm gonna make the sandwich that looks like that. You don't technically need a screen. Now the electronics mounting stuff, maybe. maybe. I'll tell you though, the uh, the room that you have in a switch wire. Doing something like a Manta board where you've got the onboard um, CB1 is really helpful in that case because of the, uh, the lack of just real space under a switch wire.
tell you what, I was looking at these thinking that these were just a straight up fit, and they are not. Meaning, I don't know if you guys can tell. That is a dovetail joint, basically. So this actually has to go bottom first and clamp in. So it's got a little bit of a V at the bottom that draws it down and tight when you put your screws in. Very nice, simple little detail there. Well, I've, I've talked to that particular company as well, and if they haven't forgotten the, the conversation, then I should have one as well. But once again, we'll see. Lordy knows I got enough projects to keep me busy. Okay, so those five are done. Repeat this process for as many as you'll be installing. Well, I'm going to install all of them, whether they have active tools or not. Pool dock spacer assemblies. These bad mamajamas. And put in the right direction. And we need an M3 heat set put in these. Again, if only we had one page in the document that was a link that says go here to put in these all your heat sets. Um I mean, we started off pretty good. Said go and do all of these taps and stuff, and we did. But the one that I can tell right now. Yeah, with every boron build. So in Rage Rabbit Carrot Feeder, did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop what we're doing. Stop what we're doing. on a second. Yeah, I almost put those in on the wrong side. So this side, it looks like there's two holes there because there's two holes, but that's got a slot in it. You want the side with the two holes and only the two holes. And that's where we're going to put it in our heat set. So Yeah, we very be careful and make sure that you put it in the right hole.
Please, everyone, make a section called pre-flight to have it show all screw parts needed, all wiring needed, all inserts before you start and then start the build. So there is, I'll say, like a pre-flight or a, or a prep section in the black box builds that does say here's the here's the printed parts you need for this section. Here's the tools. Here's the um you know the hardware you're going to need for this section. But then when it starts, it's sub-assembly based, right? So it's telling us to build one of these fully, then come back and build the others. So if I built one of these fully, I, I did epoxy on this. That means then I'd have to come back and go, oh crap, now I gotta do the other four, so let me do up another batch of epoxy. No, do, up, do all five of these, one operation at a time, like I just did. Um, or however many, like if you're saying, well, I'm only going to build three tools, so I'm not going to worry about doing the other tools right now. Okay, we'll do that. Do all three at the same time, right? Now we're going to take these other parts we have here, and these are going to snap onto the back. And so we're going to look at how these go on. So there's our heat set which means rather than snap on on this section, it's going to snap onto the section that has the little divots in it because these have the little areas that will snap directly in there. And they're all set to one side, so you make sure you get the offset, and it snaps right in. Now these are not snap, snap, and like done. They're, they're floating a little bit in here. They're not as tight tolerance as I would like, but they're going to be aligned well. <clears throat> okay, print full dock spacer and temporarily loosely secure them with an M3 by 35. Ah, so these parts are going to be used to secure the, the wire on our, like our spring uh, piano wire. Tiny, tiny little pieces, little triangles. And there's a little bit of a divot where your, where your, I think your wire will come down and get clamped in. So M3 by 35 flathead. Grab those five. Go ahead and put these up so I don't knock them everywhere by chance. So the M3 by 35, you go through this.
and we should be back. Thanks for that. Why not? We sure did. The uh, receiver battery had died out, so. It happens. By sometimes, I mean normally Saturday streams because they're longer. These are fairly tight. Um, as far as those wedges are concerned. So, we have to play with these a little bit later on when we go to install the wires. There are those. Okay, so we've got, I think, all three main parts here. A full sub assembly. Uh oh. That means we're going to use this beautiful CNC and aluminum part. This is actually pretty nicely milled. All the magnets should be either flush with the face of the tool or slightly below flush. If they're above, then it'll hit the magnet before it reaches this bar, which is going to be a cooling bar, and pull all the heat away. So we're going to fix all wiper assemblies and thus docks to the idle tool holder using M3 by 16 socket head cap screws. M3 by 16. Okay. So here it looks like we're going to go wiper, then, uh, then the CNC to aluminum piece, so we're going to come through the um, bottom of the wiper, um, the top of the wiper, there, through our CNC piece, through the CNC piece, and then into one of our bottom docks. Once again, with our um, magnet lining up, Hey, Westry, how's it going, sis? So that's what we're going to be looking for. Once again, that magnet needs to be just shy of or flat with the surface. And now we're going to do this, the remaining. And I'm going to put my three with the wipers um, on first. 
And then I'll do the two blanks. Once again, we'll come back and retrofit the one once we get the other parts from KB3D Chris. I don't know why I keep saying KB3D Chris. Once we get the other parts in from KB3D and or just Chris, then we will uh, get the rest of these done up. So how you doing, Westry? I don't know if anybody's doing the work to do that. Um, as far as uh, doing the work to do this backplane mounting type stuff to a boron. I don't know if anybody is working on that per se. There are a couple of different tool changers being designed for the boron by community members, but once again, um, your mileage may vary on, on how those work out. Oh, she's driving? Uh, Royal Novi? Okay. I see. She's going to hold you accountable. Now, Westry, which ankle did you break? Your left or your right? Yell at her for texting and driving. Good. Good. And yeah, like I said, the... I don't have the little silicone wiper pieces for a couple of these. Um, so it would take these two screws off, mount the strips here, take these two out some of the other silicone there. It'll be easy enough to add these on afterwards. Last one. Hey, home from seeing her mom. And it's a right ankle that she broke. So she's driving with a, either a broken right ankle or she's driving left footed, which means she's going to hit the brakes and like eat the dash. And let me guess, you didn't tell her mom that she's got a broken foot or ankle. Okay. That looks like what we got in the picture, right? Locate one of the two water blocks and install. Oh, wow. Water block time. What? All right, let's two, one, two, five. That's going to go there. We're going to go ahead and put this up for now, which means I'll need it in five minutes or less.
Okay. Water blocks are over here. Miscellaneous the other, I believe. Locate one of two water blocks. There's your water block. It's got a chunk of copper on it. You can see through the in there that you've got some slots to allow the water to pass through. We'll put the two fittings in here. These the fittings that we're looking for. I'm going to assume that the fittings in with the water blocks are the ones that go in the water blocks. So that would be a very bad assumption because the ones in there do not fit the water blocks. So that would be a negative. That part. Uh, This is the water cooling bomb kit black box. And there are a couple of things in here that kind of look like what it's showing. And these have wider bottoms, so they look like they would fit. And they do. I'm going to listen to her while she drives. I'm going to reserve the keep my mouth shut, no comment right now because. I would probably not have good words to say with her driving with a broken ankle. I know because I drove home with a broken foot from Virginia and it was my right foot and it was not a good idea to do that either. So I'm going to use my flat end Nipix on here. To tighten these down in there. First one will be easy because, well, I've got the ability to rotate all the way around. When I go to the next one, I won't be able to do that. Sure. How deep to make these?
Check the boot boot off the drive. I have to check with Chris if these are supposed to go all the way down flat against the against the water block surface or if that's good enough. As well, I don't know. I've never done the water blocks. The last thing I want to do is actually constrict the flow of the water in the water block because that would be pointless. Insert two 64 millimeter lengths of tubing into each fitting. Achieve perfect lengths and square cut ends. Oh, achieving perfect lengths and square cut ends is not necessary. Sealing surface for these fittings is an O-ring seal against the outside diameter of the tubing. Ensure that no cut debris enters the tubing before installation. Sharp razor blade can be used to achieve clean cuts, but always practice good safety when working with blades. Be sure the tube is fully seated in each fitting. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm not seeing any O-rings here. It didn't say to put any O-rings in, and I did not see any O-rings in the bag. There's Teflon tape on them. Um, yeah, no O-rings in here. I mean, I can continue and take them flush. That's no problem. Assuming it's this hose that's going in there. Yep. Teflon should be okay, but you've never used anything but O-rings on the water cooling setups you've done over the years. Yeah, I, I've never done a water cooling setup. So. And I guess with regard to how far down that goes, let me take out the second water block. And there's one more of these fittings. Now, somewhere down there, here we go.
Yeah, so there's the, you know, the, there's the aluminum piece, there's the copper piece. That copper piece, like I said, has some grooves cut in it to allow the water to go from side to side. But if you look at the depth there, if I, if I bring that all the way down, that's going to flush right up against that copper, which means it's, it's only hitting here and here, and that's it. It's not being able to move around through there. Is that the way these things are designed? Because once again, I've never done water cooling. Not sure if the water is supposed to get to the entirety of the back plate or if it's just wicking through those lines. Um, it, it sounds like milled aluminum. Sounds, looks, and feels like milled aluminum. Okay, that, that's what I thought. So if I, if I bury this all the way down to where that nut is flush, then I'm basically burying that, the end of that fitting right to the back of the copper, so it's not going to be flowing anywhere. Uh, well, they are. That they are, and that's why I'm going to leave them the way they are and not bury these all the way down. And it does appear to be an O-ring on the inside of the compression fitting that will seal around the side of the tube. So, now what I'm wondering is if I should do a cut jig like uh, uh, what's his name does, uh, Steve Builds does. Just design up real fast a cut jig with a you know 64 millimeters long with this diameter tubing so that I can get clean cuts on each end. Even though it says it doesn't have to be perfectly clean cuts, I would prefer to have as best as possible without without crunching the tube in the process. Um, 64 millimeters. That's going to be too tight. Wait, that.
Okay. One, use that to mark the second one. Oh, well, that's that's five. Like I said, I've just never done water setups before. I know uh, Evil Diesel has, so I may have to pick his brain some, but. He was already looking at, like, going like, ooh, I wonder if we can do hard hoses and stuff on it. Well, that's where I go back in there too well. I'll leave that out so I don't lose any of the other fitting. Or knock anything off the table. Okay, so water coolant block, two 64 millimeter pieces of tubing dubbed into said fittings. There you go. And it did say, keeping perfect lengths and square cut ends is not necessary. Good. Be sure tube is fully seated. Yep, tube is fully seated. Here to remove the plastic protection from the copper face of the water block if equipped. Leaving this in place will result in a near zero cooling ability for the idle toolbar. Good to know. And yes, it, it is equipped. So we will remove that. So nice shiny finish. All right, have fun at Costco. Cause it a pea sized amount of thermal compound in the middle of the copper face of the water block. Install and secure is shown using four. M3 by 20 socket head cap screws, indicated location. Sure the, the orientation of the cooler block correct by confirming that the hose and fittings are parallel to the x-axis of the machine. Uniformly and without high torque to avoid warping the cooler. Okay. So we need, those were M3 by 20, right? M There's those four. We are going on the Back side, 
So we're going to flip this over like this because we're seeing the printed circuit board in our wire kit. So we're going on this side and we need to clean this side really good. To make sure that we don't have any fingerprints, oils, machining residue, and whatnot. So, a little IPA on there. Flash. We need some thermal compound. Now we do have some slice engineering thermal compound. Be the boron nitride thermal paste for slice engineering. Said the size amount of thermal compound in the middle. It does not say anything about um it doesn't say anything about um spreading it out thin or anything like that, so we're just gonna put it right in the middle and off that copper as well. We'll put a dollop of this in the middle and then. And we don't have to get this on everything. Ooh. And then it goes kaboom. No pressure, no pressure, all the pressure. I need you guys saw what happened when it finally I'll say quote unquote popped. So I'm gonna see if I can't scrape some of this off. Because that's definitely more than a piece sized dollop. Funny. Bit more. That's still way too much, so we'll be doing some cleanup. Now I am using, let me triple check, these are definitely in three by twenties. Yes. They're protruding out the face of the um front surface here. So that's pretty good.
not hide torque, so just a tad edge, a thought. Okay, we're going to recap this. And then do our best to clean up the mess that is now boride nitride overflowing onto our beautifully machined surface. This will create a wonderful mess on every let it. Oh, we're coming to the end of our paper towels. All righty. I can live with that. No, I got more I night. Oh, there's our assembly now. These should be coming out pretty much level. I'm trying to just keep them level with the line of the boards. So that's good. We're going to let that sit there and allow this stuff to set up. Because it'll take a while for that borite nitride to set up. And it would be time to install this on the printer. Well, this doesn't look like it's going to be a, a chore at all. Um, all right, give me a second to clean a couple of things up here. I may go and wash my hands just so I don't wipe this all over a black printer frame. So I will do that and then we'll come back and we will start setting up the printer to move or to move to install this on the actual printer. Um because we'll have to get things lined up up here as well as get stuff ready down there because each one of these blocks with our little M3 uh screw there is going to line up like right there. We'll have an M4 bolt coming up from the back side and it's going to mount on the printer in one shot. So 
that's going to be fun. Let's get a couple of these things out of the way. And like I said, give me just a minute to run down and wash my hands real fast to get as much of this boride nitride off as I can. So I'm going to put you guys on mute while I go do that. So. Un momento, por favor. Be back. And I'm back. And we're going to take a look at a couple of things real fast. Um, probably because I can't remember what coming in this one. Ah. Another Savic servo. This will be for the other Enraged Rabbit carrot feeder we're going to build. And then. 
Wanted to check this out. Oh. Starting a collection of the three D little three D O things. So we have to find a way of hanging those up for but. This is the ooh, is a nice dark blue ASA carbon fiber. Got a couple of spools of this, and I think this is going to go on the um. Gonna go on the uh, Milo, and this should be a binky probe. Yay! Okay, now back to what we were a regularly scheduled program. I'm gonna set this over here on the side. And we need to bring our printer back up here. Printer. We need to bring the chassis of the printer back up here. We also need to move this. Cool. So. We'll walk inside so the tools are going on on keep getting we got printer up here now, so we gotta go up. There we go. So the metal side of the printer frame, that's the side where the tool changer is going. So that's gonna be on this side over here where our tool changer is Okay. So I'm kind of debating if I want to try and put this side down to make it easier. I think I do. I think I do. So, why did things don't go slipping on me? We'll put it down like that. That way I, I'll be working right here on putting things in place. Right? I think that'll make life easier. We'll we'll use gravity to our advantage instead of against us. So we need ten M4 peanut. These are the big boys. These are the ones that Chris had to replace some for me because they were too uh the ones that were shipped, a uh, good bunch of them were in fives. So we're starting going left to right. We'll have them all going in the same direction with the um, hole shooting towards the left front, I think is what they refer to it as.
you know, like I said, we'll, we'll work on getting our actual proper spacing here in a minute. Um, once we bring in our parts. So, and we're going to be using the M4 by 30 socket head cap screw. Now those 10, we're gonna need this and these blocks. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this right now to try and line up our, our thingamabobbers, peanuts. Had that there, and this whole thing is going to have to shift down. Clear this piece here. Okay, so those 10 are lined up. Thought process. The thought process here. I'm just going to set these in place, line them up. Over the, yeah, sit these in place and line them up over my peanuts. Then I should be able to flip this over. These should line up and I'll be able to put in a couple of these as guide posts.
I'm standing a little proud over here because of the uh, um, things, tubes. Once I get a couple of these in, then we can set it up and I'll tighten it the rest of the way. I'm just trying to get it up here and in place first. It would be easier to align things here if I needed to make any adjustments sideways. Or knock on wood, they have all lined up with those T nuts. I can feel them engaging. Okay, now we can lift this back up. We'll just kind of let this settle under its weight. It's not fully tightened yet. Second view of the fully assembled dock. Ready for installation. Move the T-nuts. All the dock. Lucy fastened the sub-assembly to the frame using the two far corners first. loose. Now we've got a spacer block, right? PBS. This is our spacer block that we're going to use. And this goes on this side. Do all this over sub. Place this block in here in the corner. And then we'll scoot this back over. Scoot this back over. Fine. One of you's annoying. Two. Apparently, I should move this over when I had I had it laid down. There we go. I just needed to lift it up a little. So we've got this in the corner here. We've moved our spacer blocks over, and things are tight here in the corner. Fully tighten all tool bank screws. All the M3 socket head cap screws that secure each nozzle wiper assembly to each tool dock. Remove the printed tool. Working our way down. Give me one moment, folks.
All right. That was Mama San. Just out of curiosity, it said uh, not have these fully tightened yet. Must have missed that step. Don't know why, but okay, we'll we'll follow along. We'll play along. I do notice that the spacing is different between some. I don't know if that's just. How the dots play out and work or. Guys, let me get you up here a little bit. You're home? Awesome. Glad you made it home. Yeah, that that was way too much when it when it dropped out there. Get these all tightened up. Make them all nice and pretty. And then we'll come back and tighten all of the nozzle wipes up. Take our printed uh, block out of the way. Congratulations, you have completed the tool dock assembly. The crowd goes wild. And now we're just going to clean up. Because I'm tired. I gotta get my. I gotta call my mom and see what's up. Um, I will take a picture of this though and post it up on the Twitters and the uh, Discords of the world, or at least the ones that I'm a part of. But yeah, I I think we made darn good progress. We did what uh, three sections today. Well, I think that's pretty good progress. We got three sections put together. Um, when we come back next week, we'll be working on the actual tools. So the actual three tools that we can mount right now. I won't be able to do the fourth one until I get the fourth kit, which will come with the rest of my stuff from KB3D. Um, but yeah, and we'll need to, once again, fix our worm gear. And I'll talk to Chris about ways of doing that and have him double check his stock to figure out if it's another uh, quality issue on that side. But uh, yeah, we've got... Everything pretty much put together here. I think all I have to do is take the, um, I'll probably have to take the black stop off and take the gear off, put the worm drive on the motor, put the motor in, install it with three screws, and then put this gear back on, lining it up with the worm gear, lock it down, put the black, um, Black stop back on, and that part's done. So other than that, we now have a moving gantry, fully belted. We've got almost the entire piece of our tool lockdown mechanism installed. We like said just need to fix the motor, and we've got our uh, tool heads installed, or our tool heads, our tool dockings. Hey, Britt, how's it going? We have made tons of progress. Let me bring you in here. So, once again, 
the motor uh, would mount here, but the worm drive that engages this gear down here um, is the center bore for mounting it to the motor is the wrong size. So we'll have to take this piece off, this piece off, install that motor once we figure that out, install the gear, put the black stop back on, and we're, and we're caught up. On the other side of this drive motor, around here, is this locking T-bar. So it will, I believe it's up, if up is locked or if up is unlocked but regardless it'll be you know unlocked it'll go pick up a tool it will lock undock the tool use it go back put it in undock and then grab the next one so and then we've got whoops sorry we got our five um bar or uh, tool holder piece in here we've got the wiper set up for three because I'm still waiting on the last two kits that'll come here when Chris sends me my next order and this aluminum bar that goes all the way across here now here has a water block installed so this is where we're going to be we have a water block it's installed to this um, aluminum plate. Each one of the tool heads will have aluminum to aluminum. And so it'll conduct the heat down through the aluminum bar and then we'll have the cooling here. Same thing as what this plate's doing. It picks up the tool head and the same aluminum block that's cooling the tool head while it's docked is gonna be touching this plate right here and we'll have another cooling block on it to cool this stuff. So that's kind of how the, the cooling works on this. But we are set up, we're making progress. The next chapter in the guide is going to be actually building our tool heads. So yeah, we made good progress today. It's an extra long stream day. Uh, but once we started on the tool dock, I wanted to kind of finish it. So that's where we're at and we're done. And like I said, the next section up is, yeah, building our FDM tools. And then, ooh, build your FDM tools and then electronics mounting. So yeah, we're, we're getting pretty darn close here. Getting pretty close here. So once again, everybody, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to take, you know, try and take some good photos of this and get it um, posted up on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here and sharing your day with me. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I'm glad that you guys are here to hang out with me and have fun. Keep me going. Chat me up. And thank you, everybody that either gifted subs, resubscribed, uh, gave bits. I really appreciate it. It really helps keep things going on stream uh, because, you know, I, I do wind up buying a lot of the stuff that is built on stream. So I really appreciate the support and the kindness that you all show. So thanks a lot, everybody. Let me figure out somebody who's on that we can raid out to. And then, let's see. Chaos Drucker, Mayhem's Batista's he's printing, Juana. Um, there's a Globalthon going on. File Mods is on, Maker Deck, Sid Heresy, and the Jerry Show. I guess at this point, uh, let's jump on over to the Jerry show. Um, so thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, Mr. Wizix, Da Vinci, Westry, Creatix Brit, Pete, Why Not, 
uh, and everybody else that's on here. There's there's a lot of you on here right now. I'm going to set up this raid over to go see Jerry. And please come with me and, and go over and show Jerry some love. I really appreciate it. And we will be back on Tuesday for more of the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder on the Trident. And we'll be back to Black Box next Saturday, making more progress on the tool heads. So thanks, everybody, for being here. And I will talk to you all on Saturday. Or excuse me, on Tuesday. Wow. Bye now.